What's going on, everybody? I hope everyone's having a fantastic evening, afternoon, pre No matter where you are in the world, this is the Song Piker. And the, I'm a Song Piker. This is awesome. I'm broadcast coming to you live from sunny California, Los Angeles, folks. Well, not so sunny, actually. I take it back. Kind of grimy and kind of gray. California, Los Angeles, folks. I'm live and alive. And I hope all the boys, girls, and MBs are having a fantastic one because today's a beautiful day. Today's a wonderful day. Today's a fantastic day. Today is merch day that's right it's thursday it's thursday merch day and i'm live and alive and i hope everyone's having a fantastic one. Oh my god i'm a little disheveled even though i had all the time in the world to prepare for this but as always it's uh not great i'm, I'm doing it haphazardly already caught my ideology fuck hassan Fuck yeah, Hassan. Hell yeah. He sounded like an auctioneer for a minute. That's right. That's right. Ladies and gentlemen, this is merch day already. It's not selling out. We are not doing a customer service stream as always when people come in here and go, hey, I just bought this merchandise. Like, what is the sizing of this? Anyway, is the merch made to order? No, it's not. Uh, it will be. It will be. We already have a limited amount that's readily available. And then the rest, I think, like, you will get a warning. If it runs out, um, then it'll go into made to order. Um, I need to know if this is the same company that made the last shirts. I got the last collection and my XL was like an L. Yes, it's Bayside. It's always Bayside. Bayside is always Bayside. Hoodie is absolute heat. Just copped. Hell yeah. Merch is still union made, right? Not sure if the website specifies. Yes, dude. It's still union made. Oh my God. I know I just said that I fucking haven't. I, I know I said that this is not going to be a customer service stream, but God damn, it's already, we're already there. We're already freaking there. The website apparently launched earlier than the stream. We were, I was supposed to time it at, at 11, but anyway, um, folks, this is a part of the broadcast where I tell you a little bit about my personal News about what's going on in the world of Hassan Hassan Ivy Piker. And let me tell you, last night, I ended the broadcast after a short thing. You know, we did like a, what, nine-hour broadcast? Half day, basically. Half day. Um, and after that, I, I went in, and I'm still... I finally... I'm finally in the last chapter of Yakuza 8, and I think uh, it's over. I'm going to finish the game now. I'm going to go and finish the game. I did, like, all of the friendship quests. I maxed out on all the friendship of every single character in the game. I I did all of that. And also I finally found a shark fin, which is like an item that's impossible to find to get like the best weapons in the game, to like craft the best weapons in the game. And it's really, really, really annoying because like you have to either like collect trash on the beach or you have to do these like dungeons over and over again. <laughs> and I don't, you know, I don't know. I just like. I don't know why I have like a bit of a headache too. Anyway, um, Johnny Harris maxing. What do you mean? Did you clean up the sploosh from the toy? I did. This you. <sighs> butthole, butthole, gooch, gooch, penis. <sighs> butthole, butthole, gooch, gooch, penis. Yes. That is me. Uh, 
<clears throat> anyway, as I was saying, dude, new John Oliver vid dropped. Yeah, we'll watch it. It's Thursday. Thursday, John Oliver day. New JFK conspiracy just dropped. It was Zionist all along. Okay. Um. So. What the hell was I going to say? I'm like, I'm all over the place. Uh. Any discount codes? No. I couldn't watch this because of the Nickelodeon stuff and I didn't have my headphones at work. Content was not good for the wandering ears. If there are two things that will absolutely happen today, one, the most annoying chatters asking Hassan about merch sizes, and two, those same exact chatters starting merch drama on Twitter because Hassan yelled at them. Get ready for that chat. Okay. Three, Hideo Offliner will say like annoying shit in the chat that will piss me off. You forgot that part. You forgot a, a really important part of that. Is streamer aware of what happens to gays in the Muslim world? What a, what a way to fucking start the day, dude. What happens to the gays in the Muslim world? Tell me Highland lad, please. I would love to hear what your assessment is to what happens to the gays in the Muslim world, you know? I obviously would never be able to comprehend what happens to gays in the Muslim world. I, after all, am not Muslim, uh, nor am I from the Muslim world. You, on the other hand, grew up in Idaho, so you probably know a lot more about this shit than I do. You know what I mean? You shill for them. For what, Muslims? Like, I'm a shill for Muslims? Good start to the broadcast, boys. Er, anyway. Um, so, yeah. That's... If you go to ideology.shop. Unraveled Republic Collection. We have some of the old classics we brought back. Like the... The Marlboro Tea. That you guys know and love. Capitalism is voluntary. Get bread or get dead. Uh, and the... The capitalism is voluntary. Get bread or get dead. Uh crew neck hoodie or whatever pullover that's also back in stock um this is one of my favorite hoodies the liberty tour hoodie skull tour hoodie um there's a t-shirt and a hoodie of that i mean not a hoodie sorry a crew neck of that get in we're doing a coup corrupt collusion collapse Titan of Terror, the the much awaited Kaya merch. And then uh get in, we're doing a coup America's favorite hobby. Crew neck. And uh, capitalism is in decay T. I just want to say this is your best line yet. Your graphics designer did a wonderful job. Well done to you and everyone who collaborated. Yeah, I've, I've been yeah shouts out to the shouts out to the artist that worked on this god damn it i yes the green cargo pants are from engineered garments not that it's uh, relevant to the subject matter and the black pants are yoji yamamoto both of the black pants i wear in the in the photo shooter yoji yamamoto two different types of yoji yamamoto the belt that i'm wearing in this photo is actually from the photographer i think it's like a handmade custom belt made by some like person who actually makes um like sculptures normally who's the designer me bro me me i'm the designer and uh is sizing the same as previous jobs yes it's bayside it's union made all union made all american made american union made it ships international it's the same shit dude it's the same shit every fucking drop please anyway what's the reason behind the japanese on each piece i'm a fucking weeb and i wanted this to be the weeb collection
And as always, the Houthis will not fuck with these shipments. We know that. We know the Houthis won't fuck with these shipments because I got to deal with them. They know this is like, even if you're ordering into Israel as one of the 12 Israeli leftists, including one that said, should I immigrate out of Israel and where to sad face? I have a deal with them. Don't worry for all the, the 12 Israeli leftists out there. If you want to buy this stuff, don't worry. You can still get it. And the Houthis won't actually stop your shipment. I have a separate deal with them. First cop since your himbo merged this line is heat. Thank you. Your shirt comes from China. Knew it. If someone calls the Japanese Orientalist, then it actually makes sense given what the merch represents. Yeah, I don't care. I think it's cool. Um, For this one, we wanted to do like, basically, we wanted to do for this t-shirt specifically, for example, we wanted to do like a classic album art. But like take an American work and 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 present it as though it was like being toured in Japan. Uh, same with this one. It's like a movie. It's basically like an American movie. Uh, the, the inspiration for this one that I gave them was the Japanese Die Hard release poster. Yeah, Japan tour import LP look. Exactly. Um, and uh, same for all of it behind on the back of most of the capitalism and decay tour dates is actually not real tour dates but actually american coup dates yeah this was the insp this is like something along these lines was the inspiration for it exactly um The Liberty one is a nod to Raymond Pettibone's Sonic Youth design. Yes. Yep. Anyway, uh, I'm done shilling. And I'm going to talk about my personal news now. Okay. And I'll do more shilling in a little bit. So as far as uh as far as personal news goes ended the broadcast last night uh didn't do much uh played yakuza 8 woke up this morning worked out kind of had like a mid-ass uh basketball sesh for myself and a mid-ass kaya sesh i'm not gonna lie because the park was kind of empty because the weather's kind of shit it's like hazy it's 63 degrees but it's like very gray right now and when it gets cloudy Californians, specifically Los Angelinos, never go outside. They hate it. And then I've been working on the final touches on this merch stuff since then. Trying to figure out what photos to post. Things like that. So that's what I've been doing this morning. Bro, half my wardrobe is your merch at this point. Yeah, well, my goal is to make t-shirts that my goal has always been to basically make merch that you would wear or that like someone would wear even if they don't know who I am. Okay? Like I want it to be standalone. I want it to be so good that people are like, "Oh yeah, no, I I, I don't know what this is. I don't know what brand this is, but it's fire." And I think like every single every single time we've like released stuff it's gotten closer and closer to that. You know what I mean? The Tendies tea was not that. I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, the Tendies one was a meme, right? Like, I'm also trying to do stuff that's, like, fun for the in-group, too. It's not just the... I took your pink Bernie shirt to EDC LV and people kept asking about it. Yeah. Like the goal is to make sure. The 
goal is to make sure that it's good enough that it's like standalone, you know? And I think we've achieved that, especially in this drop. Like we've definitely, this is the closest we've come to achieving that, in my opinion. So, yeah. New collection dropped today. At dawn, Lemon in the building later. I think Don Lemon is supposed to be coming today, but I don't know what's going on. It's like his people reached out to my people to come on, but my manager is in Australia currently, so he's not like being responsive. So I have no idea if he's coming on today or not, but I think he's supposed to be. This is the day I gave him, even though I did not give him an address. Even though I did not give him an address, nor did I give him a time, but I suspect that he will, you know, my, my manager will inevitably reach out to me and tell me when he's coming. I love your designs, but I really wish you would do some hoodies with zippers. My limitations on what kind of merchandise I'm putting out is almost entirely around Bayside Garment Manufacturing, which happens to be the largest unionized garment manufacturer in the United States of America. And we still keep clearing out their goddamn inventory on a regular basis. And they genuinely don't have a lot of the stuff that uh, like there's American made stuff that's in a non-union shop that we can go to, which I have in the past. And I do sometimes if I have that opportunity, if there is no union alternative, I will go for like a U.S. made non-union uh, shop. But so far, I don't feel like so far it's not you know a thing that i have um a, a thing that i've done have you considered doing cut and sew again or are you going to keep it union based for now yeah um with the cut and sew stuff how much do you pay your workers do y'all have hoodies or sweatpants um manager this isn't communist of you wait what do you mean brother let me explain something to you managers and agents in general Okay, they work off of a percentage basis of what they actually sell of your labor. And it is a way to advocate for, you know, getting a larger percentage of the value that you create. It's usually not worth it for many people, for the record. But um, in my position at, at, at the stage that I'm in in my career, um, I trust my manager and I like that there's someone i can trust that's in my corner you know what i mean i've been working with this person since wme for many many years and uh yeah <laughs> his job for the most part is to tell fuck to say fuck off to most brands that come and try to do uh ads so i think like he does that very well As a Palestinian and live in Palestine, I'm happy to see someone famous being supportive and cares. Hope you're doing all right. Have you actually ever taken clothes designing class? No, I have not. Um, hold on. Let me fucking finish this. New collection drop later. Don Lemon in the building later. New collection drop today. Don Lemon in the building later. Um, um, burr, 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 burr. I'm going to talk about Shohei Otani. Talking Dan Schneider. Show. Hey, oh, Tony. Apple lawsuit. Bernie Moreno. And more. Get in now. ideology.shop what did you think of this uh, what did you think of this week's Shogun episode I thought it slapped with the cultural clash it was awesome 
But every episode of Shogun is awesome. New Kaya edit just dropped. Are you caught up on Tokyo Vice? No. Uh, I have been watching Tokyo Vice, but I haven't, I haven't caught off on, uh, caught up on Tokyo Vice. Blast off already. The reason why I haven't blasted off already is because I'm looking for like the best possible photos to upload alongside this thing. All right. What pants were you wearing in the Liberty Tour hoodie short? Um, Yoji Yamamoto. Please cover, cover Kyle Rittenhouse getting absolutely cooked by University of Memphis students last night. Oh, I absolutely will, my friend. Do not worry about that at all. That is coming. All right, let's blast it. All right, we're blasting off. We're blasting off. We're blasting off. We're blessed on off. Twitter crops did you dirty? It's fine. I uh, will be covering Otani. Yes. That is kind of shitty. The Twitter crop me so silly, but so uh, I'm wearing a. Uh, the keen-eyed observers will recognize that I'm wearing a Salem hat in this photo shoot and that's because what how does one reconcile having a disney plus subscription these days not a jibe or a gotcha speaking of someone who's kind of self-excluded from a lot of media bubbles and i love to contribute to the machine but i feck it and want to see shogun well i have a hulu subscription and a disney plus subscription and a subscription to pretty much everything that fucking exists and let me tell you i don't give a single shred of a fuck okay about like the the ethical considerations of the kinds of content that these guys are making or the kinds of causes that they're con contributing to because i mean you know the only thing i care about is making good content if they make good content if there's good media there i will purchase a subscription i don't really think about i don't really think about it beyond that virtually impossible dude you're still your hoodies sell out within 10 minutes of each drop wait what <laughs> yeah my recommendation to you is not to avoid Disney Plus because of ethical considerations, but to avoid Disney Plus because it sucks ass. And that is the least ethical thing you can do as a content provider, content creator, is to make dog shit IP. And I think Disney very much makes dog shit IP, which is precisely the reason why it's the easiest one to avoid. Okay, I don't even know. It's like the fun. Actually, you know what? I take it back. The thing is, like you would say, oh, there's nothing on Disney Plus. And that would be valid to say, except there are things on Disney Plus. They do make stuff on Disney Plus, And usually it fucking sucks. That's the worst is that it's not that they don't have anything in their library, right? They do have a bunch of stuff in their library. The problem is all of that new stuff that they make sucks. And it's crazy. Having said that, I suspect people are talking about. You know. Having having said that, I suspect people probably want to watch the new X-Men or some shit. And that's why they're talking about. Um, apparently there's also, they're running a promo where you get a free t-shirt with a hundred dollar purchase. That's what my merch guys are texting me. We'll give you a choice between tough poggers and camo at checkout. Uh, there was era's tour drama. That was like a Harry Potter game all over again. Also, does the Kuti have the dates? Yes. I am wearing the XL currently. Uh, on me and it's the same t-shirt that I'm wearing in the in here as well
One shirt is $100, so that's easy. Why would you say such a thing? Okay? There is 0% chance that you fucking... Th dude, these are $35 t-shirts, and they're fucking union-made in the United Continental States of America. Okay? Get the fuck out of here. Suck my entire cock all the way from the motherfucking back. You got motherfuckers out there, okay, making t-shirts in Indonesia, selling them for 75 fucking bucks, and you're really going to come at me like that? American, union-made, manufactured in the United States ass motherfucking t-shirts, okay? Union hands touch those fucking garments. That is outrageous, okay? I don't want to hear nothing. He's saying one free one is given to you at $100. This conversation happens every drop. Yeah, I know. Can we get some of these shirts that are make the rich pay part two jokes out of the way or we'll get banned? No. Um, I think we've elevated every single lineup. And we're going to keep doing it. And we're going to keep going crazy. And that's it. Is getting better and better and better. Uh, will the heavy metal EDLG logo tees ever come back? Did you guys like those a lot? Maybe. It doesn't have the thick collar. What Chinese troops see as they start rolling into 80% of the United States? Okay. Yeah, and they will be overcome by our greatness. Like, they will literally, they'll be like, we can't do anything with these guys. You mentioned Dave the Diver weeks ago, and I picked it up on sale. Shit is so good. It's very cute. Hey, not to be annoying, but the website checkout cart is bugged. The free shirt isn't taken off the actual total at checkout. Oh my god. Um they're saying the free shirt. You don't get one random shirt. You get one of the three that they give you an option to choose from. Just for the record. Do you design the stuff and collaborate with the artists? Yes. Honestly, less straight band tees and more movie slash tour t tour shirts is awesome. Okay, it works for me. Plenty of people are saying it's working for them. So, you know, sucks to suck. I don't know if there's a typo or not, man. It's too late. If there is a typo, then guess what, dude? There's a typo in it, okay? Before everybody combs through fucking all the dates and goes, this one is not correct or whatever. Sure. I, yeah, I don't know, okay? Maybe it's not. I don't care. No, it is. He might be bugging. <sighs> All right. T-shirts are not free. Check out. You can choose one of the three, of course. And they say they're free, but upon selecting them, they're $20. Other chat has appointed this out as well. Uh, it might be a tax or something. Or it might be for the additional cost of the shipping. I don't fucking know. Oh, my God, dude. Dude, I'm doing customer service again. Every fucking day of the goddamn week. Every time. Every time we do one of these... Merch releases, no matter what happens, it turns into a fucking customer service, one-on-one -on -one fuck fest, okay? T-shirt salesman. Uh, my job is not to give you immediate real-time feedback on issues that I do not know anything about, okay? Unless there's like a massive, massive, massive issue, um, you know, chill out. Told you out the checkout right after they select the shirt, then it shows up as free Lamont. Yeah. Yeah, this is crazy. Motherfuckers are like, can we haggle? <laughs> can we haggle? There's an error where my bank account says, I don't have enough funds in my account for all the t-shirts I want to purchase. JK, great merch, bro. Yeah. 
Customer service job is the hardest job in the world. That's not even a joke. Straight up. Yeah, she, she a little freak. She for the street. Six digits on the check, took it to the bank. Commas up the commas, make it boy. Got a tan coming over, only need to thank. Shoot blanks on a blank, make it girl. My wrist ain't peasy, pros can't please me. Sounding too easy, I'ma. Stay creamy, pocket so dreamy. Shotty wanna freak me, okay. She, she a little freak, she on me. Anyways, Jack Donahue collab went. I DM'd him and I was like, bro, the fucking photographer was wearing your Salem hat. So I rocked that shit on the photo shoot. He has not responded since, but I'm sure he thinks it's very cool. Um, I was never, I would never was so anxious and depressed as I was working iOS support for Apple. Apparently the Civil War movie is getting good reviews. Would you look at Dragon's Dogma 2 today? Did it come out? That's awesome. Um, I mean, people are saying Civil War is good. I will watch it. You know what I mean? It's it's got a solid, it's got a solid cast. It's got a solid uh director. So Not even your PC can handle 60, stable 60 FPS at 1080p. Wait, really? Banger. Armand Domalewski. Alexei Navalny, listen, I've got something very obvious to tell you. You're not allowed to give up. Why'd this guy block me? I'll tell you what's wrong with Yeah. The perception that the program at Give Green needs to be conditional. They choose to offer unconditional cash transfers for two reasons. First, empowering poor people to make their own choices. Well, that advances their core value of respect. Dude, Zoomers are so busted. There is no salvation for the Zoomers. Y'all not making it out of the hood, okay? Y'all brains are fucking broken. Let me explain something to you. I don't know what this movie is, but you can't fucking make an edit like this where the music in the background is literally louder than what fucking John Cena is saying, man. What's happening? The director of this movie also did Green Book. I'll tell you what's wrong with Yeah. The perception that the program to give green needs to be conditional. They choose to offer unconditional cash transfers for two reasons. First, empowering poor people to make their own choices, well, that advances their core value of respect. Second, imposing conditions requires expensive, monitoring and enforcement structures that could raise administrative costs as high as 63%. Existing empirical evidence comparing the impact of conditional to unconditional. It's like bass boosted, slowed down carnival mixed with another song playing louder than the fucking commentary. I'm, I can't hear anything he's saying, okay? I cannot hear what he's saying. I'm sorry. I don't know if it's because, like, I'm a boomer or whatever, but honestly, there's no way to understand what the fuck's going on there. I'm the wife. Of course, I'm going to unplug the Wi-Fi. I'm the husband. Of course, I can... I'm the wife. Of course, I'm going to control your life. I'm the husband. Of course. I'm the wife. Of course, you can't go back to America. I'm the husband. Of course. I'm the wife. Of course, you're going to do everything I say. I'm the husband, of course. I'm the wife, of course I'm gonna feed you a lot. I'm the husband. I'm the wife, of What is this passport ass vid? Yeah, I don't know what the fuck this is, what's going on here. 90 Day Fiance Reverse Edition. <laughs> Libertarians, man. Okay, everybody needs to chill. Not every, like, I love, I love this concept because, like, I, I mean, he might be, he might be a libertarian because you know he he is giving libertarian vibes. But like, I, <laughs> we are now at the precipice of like doing woke, anti miscegenation memes. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's turn, it's basically turning into like any type of race mixing. It implies like an uh, a power imbalance and it there's no 
like genuine meaningful connection that two individuals can have with one another if they are from different countries and it's like i know that in a lot of these situations i know that in a lot of these situations you do have uh, a dude who specifically fucking flies over to a poorer country to just like kind of do kind of ball on a budget but but you know let's chill out okay without additional background information when you go so woke you become anti-race mixing i know <sighs> he spent all his money building a house in the philippines and then moved her there to marry her during the season oh is it 90 day fiance shit Your merch is so sick. I got three T's and a sweat. Great job. Congrats. Thanks. Oh, dude, I saw this already and I retweeted it. You son of a bitch. I was losing my hair. I would go. I had. Regarding your tomato serum, vitamin C is good, but very unstable once it hits oxygen. The bottle is very important and it should have a sealed pump instead of an open top with a dropper. The vitamin C won't matter or do anything if you aren't wearing SPF. So what, like, is this tomato syrup shit that I bought and put on my face cooked then? It feels good, like it feels like it's working. I got it a long ass time ago too. Yes, it's 90 Day Fiance related. Is a gamer, and there's videos of him completely freaking out as expected. How hard was it to clean up that shit? It wasn't that hard. It was just like regular old water, almost basically. Um. Anyway, they fucking they they got her boy Stone Toss again. This time, his Telegram group. Turns out, his Telegram group is filled to the goddamn brim with, "Hey guys." You might have been shocked to find out, but Nazis. That's right. Wow. Here is Vishal P. Singh. Pronouns they, he. Um, this is from uh, Vishal P. Singh's uh, reports that for the Daily Coast. <clears throat> uh, say it ain't so. That's crazy. Here's Stone Toss saying the N-word with a hard R. What? Pinned message, Adolf Hitler, gas the K-words, says a Pepe, Alexandre Natsok, just says the N-word. Oh, here's a Swazi, a Swasti, white woman with a whip, just normal stuff, normal stuff, just a bunch of normal stuff from a not nazi guy who very openly defends nazis on a regular basis how shocking stone toss viral comics have been re releasing online since 2017 in a feature the uh, a, a feature a buffet of hard right dogma repackaged for mainstream appeal including but not limited to holocaust denial nazi sympathizing <sighs> anti-semitism sexism anti-lgbtq hate anti-Islam hate, anti-immigrant hate, and anti-black racism. On Twitter, slash X, Stone Toss has reached nearly half a million followers. Research from the Global Network and Extremism Technology says Stone Toss is a crypto-Nazi, a neo-Nazi that actively tries to disguise or downplay their identity as a Nazi to maintain a more respectable public image. According to researchers, Stone Toss pulls from neo-Nazi views and makes them more palatable to a broader audience. Of course someone who famously did that was milo ianopolis psa bug fix for the free shirt issues i had the same issue what fixed it is removing the free shirt from the cart then we'll offer you a free one again then add in the correct size and immediately click the checkout button below that fixes it you basically me basically me what
Anyway, on popular social media platforms, the Stone Toss community knows how to dog whistle and hide their neo-Nazism behind a facade of plausible deniability. But, like all trolls, they cannot resist going mask off with their hate. In 2019, the official Stone Toss communities on Reddit and Discord were banned. What? But the official Stone Toss Telegram channel, linked directly from the Stone Toss website, is still up and running. And the chat room for the Telegram channel is about as unfiltered as neo-Nazi communities can get. For the first time, we are exclusively leaking raw HTML data from the Stone Toss Telegram chat room, so these chat logs can be viewed by all. But what exactly is in these chat logs? The Stone Toss Telegram channel was created on January 9, 2021. <laughs> oh, so uh, he just said the N-word one day after he made the Telegram channel. I suspect he, you know, this is why he made the Telegram channel. He's like, all right, finally, we made the Telegram channel. Time to say the N-word with a hard R. It's like... <laughs> anyway, the second message was also from... The first message from Stone Toss was a misspelled greeting. Hello. The second message was also from Stone Toss. It was a single uncensored slur and nothing else. The N word. That's so, I'm sorry. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> bro, bro, let me tell you something. Okay. <laughs> this is not even a joke. I, I know that I jokingly routinely say a big part of these guys' politics revolves around being able to say the N-word with a hard R without receiving any kind of, like, scrutiny. And I'm not even joking when I say, like, literally, that is what it is. That is, that is precisely what happens, okay? That's what they're doing. It's just about... It's just about saying the N-word with a hard R. Single issue voters. There is no better demonstration of this reality than this dude setting up a Telegram channel. The first thing he says is hello, and then the second thing he says is the N-word, the hard R. That's it. From this point on, the chat room is filled with Stone Toss comics and almost exclusively virulent comments, responses from other chat room members. Stone Toss's community excessively uses slurs for black people, LGBTQ people, disabled people, and Jewish people multiple times on a daily basis. Oftentimes, slurs are practically the only form of communication in the chat logs. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's kind of funny when you think about it because it's like... They actually had you as a meme. What? God damn it, dude. You fucking cooked me so hard. That's the first of the day. We have we should have a rule where you're not allowed to cook me on the first one. Like you're not allowed to cook me on the first one of the day, okay? I'm supposed to be the one that's popping off on the first one. You cooked me. Anyway. Hi, yeah, yeah. Here's a three minute ad break now. At the top of the hour, there's a three minute ad break. If you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime by connecting your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account. You made me in Dragon's Dogma. Is this me though? It is funny to tune in and the first thing I hear is a song going, God damn it, dude. No, their politics are no one should be able to push back on our aggressions ever. We attack anyone and if they fight back, it's their fault. Yeah, it's your fault if you watch the three minute break at the top of the hour though. Because you have an opportunity to subscribe for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime. And avoid seeing those ads. Or even get gifted a sub. If you're lucky, use a stream and ad break now. Okay. Uh, people, stop sending me your Dragon's Dogma characters that you guys made. 
I'm black and grew up primarily around white people. And from what I can tell is that the dream of many white people is to say the N-word to a black person and not get called a racist. My favorite technique is when they repeat you saying the N-word and act like they didn't say it. They just copied you. Okay. I can uncritically confirm that what you are saying is 100,000% correct. Okay. What you are describing is... Every, is something that every single white person absolutely for from every different kind of political background by the way wants okay all the way from the most racist white person who wants to be able to say it with no pushback because like the the black people around them he wants to dominate them racially right all the way to the most woke white person who wants to be accepted Straight up. That is definitely what it is. So it, it you just, you're, you absolutely nailed it because th what you're saying here basically targets like every category. 100%. Actual L take, does that mean you do? Does that mean you want to say it too? No. But there was a time when I, definitely was that white person that wanted to be accepted yeah 100 percent. i'll i'll admit it i don't think i think it's like lame to just fucking lie about it black people are cool as fuck black culture is the coolest fucking thing that american culture has it's the only thing that american culture has especially if you're like learning about american culture from the outside the fuck are you talking about 100 percent. yeah and then you come to America, if you're me, and then you meet black people and you're like, this is not like a something, this is not just like something like a cultural product, a commodity to consume. These are just like real human beings, okay, uh, with wants, needs, desires, uh, just like everybody else. And then all of a sudden, it, it just turns into something entirely different. And you recognize how fucking lame that shit is to, to, to think that like, um, you want exclusive acceptance from the black community and instead you treat people like they're people no matter what their background is and you become a normal person who doesn't have that desire and it's not just white people either yeah it's all non-black uh people that i would say have this uh this want at a certain point but once you this might be the first time i've i've vehement i've ever vehemently disagreed with you i think once i think once you move away from like coming from a segregated background not ever like being around black people or having or only being around like one or two black people when you're growing up to like actually being an adult surrounded by other people in a, a diverse environment where you learn and this is why i think like college is very important for example where a lot of people for the first time ever are like in a diverse environment that isn't like completely constructed in a white supremacist manner and that's when people go, oh shit, like this isn't just um, this isn't just rap music. You know what I mean? It, it isn't just like things that I've seen on television. These are real human beings that I am uh, now friends with. Now it se it seems crazy when I describe it like this because you're like, what the fuck do you mean? Like that's what it takes? Like you can't just like recognize the humanity of people? Uh, no, many people can't because. They have no experiences. Okay? Don't be immediately defensive to what I'm saying and try to understand what I'm saying and you will recognize it. America is a very segregated... America is a very segregated place. Of course, that segregation is very different for black people because, like, they are ultimately living in a white country. So... They experience whiteness every day of the week. But if you are white, you don't experience black people as people, but instead 
simply a cultural commodity, a product to consume. That's why living in an urban environment or a diverse environment is very important. Anyway, as a black man, the most frustrating thing is that when you see that white people want to steal AK, appropriate everything from us, but then also do nothing to actually lift black people up. It's like black stuff is awesome. Um, music, fashion, looks, everything, but black people, nah, they don't care about that. Yeah, it's like having a racist guy with a Bob Marley poster. They just want to, uh, they just want us to produce culture for them to emulate really, really prevalent in like K-pop in an infuriating way. Absolutely. Which is why I always say be fucking normal, okay? <laughs> don't. You know, don't don't treat black people differently than you would anyone else. And and, you know, and you're fine after that. That's all you need to do is just be fucking normal. Seriously, move on from this take and subject. You're really showing some egg on your face with this. This take is you parading as a raised here American. You're definitely just showcasing growing up in Turkey and viewing it as only culture and not living people. This is not something people think on bulk in America, regardless of her how horrifically. I never wish to say words that countless people have heard as a slur just before their death. Go fuck yourself. Bro, fucking calm down. Calm down, white boy. Okay, calm down. Calm down, man. Chill out. Okay. God damn. <laughs> Whoo. Sheesh. I said, even if it's not about literally saying the N word, it's about wanting black acceptance. Okay. Which you are definitely, it seems, doing your very best right now to go above and beyond. Remember when I said be normal? You know, when we're having a conversation about this. Taking it personally and being like, go fuck yourself, you fucking piece of shit. Like, you don't have to be like a fucking anime villain here. I'm using broad generalizations for the most part, specifically because, you know, we're talking about white supremacist uh, undertones and white supremacist social conditioning. Hansen, I would be like, anti-racist equals pandering for black acceptance. <laughs> Famously. Which is why I get called an anti-black racist and also an anti-white racist at the same time. This guy, this guy gives me the vibes of like a. Like, uh, I come from three generations of socialists and I love, uh, I live in Portland attitude. Like that's the vibe I'm getting here. Ah. Don't feed them. They're hungry for attention. I think they just like misunderstood what I was saying. The N word in the community is not viewed as a slur when we use it on each other. So it's all, so if all you consume is black culture, and have none of the context about racism around it. You're going to see it as something cool. That's all Hassan I'll be saying. Damn, please relax, chat. Yes. Anyway. Hilarious that actual POC and specifically black chatters are confirming that reality. And this white guy feels like he has the authority to go over and was ahead. Yeah, he just... He... Not gonna lie, this combo gets tiring after a while. No, it's it's I, I always I always have time for this combo. Dude, I really want Dr. Umar so bad. I would love to fucking have Dr. Umar on the stream. It would be so sick. He could like educate me. Anyway. He's calling you a foreigner for saying white people exploit black culture in the U.S. No, he's he's listen, he wasn't saying that. He's saying that like, how dare you say that like every white American has 
once fantasized about saying a slur. That's what he said. He got real mad. I'm literally stating these things a Hispanic person who's experienced hate crimes himself. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's what he's saying. He's like, I've never. First of all, I'm just saying that your perspective is off here. Okay, dude. I'm first of all. I can again see the whiteness coming from your fucking statement. Okay. Please stop. And you're not just saying, you say, go fuck yourself, <laughs> which was really funny. He did word it very poorly on the outside of that sentiment. I don't really care. When are you adding back Mark Lamont Hill? I've, I've literally texted him a bunch of stuff. Uh, I've texted him a bunch of times to be like, bro, please come back on. You were, you're incredible. No, the reason why I called, the reason why I said he's like definitely white is because he said he's Hispanic. And it's like, come on, bro. <laughs> saying the, saying the N word is like a critical part of, uh, of, of Latino culture in America. Okay. <laughs> saying it when you shouldn't say it. <laughs> anyway it is pretty funny because we were just talking about a, a, a white hispanic dude a white puerto rican hispanic dude with the name klaus graber and his fucking Telegram channel. <laughs> Obviously, there's different uh, degrees to this. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, no shot. You were talking to Don Lamont. 100% agree. Latinos and Hispanics have been so brain broken by whiteness. Yeah. Anyway. Do you let F ams call you dude? What the fuck? Bro, that is the craziest thing I've I've never heard. Is this gotta be racist? Okay. Did we just did this guy invent a new type of racism? He said F ams. Like shortened for African Americans. I mean, this part of it makes me think that he's joking, because this is pretty funny. Do you let do you let black people call you dude is pretty funny? So I I suspect. It is a bibliographical term, sir. I've never... What the fuck? <laughs> he said, Afams, just say black, bro. What the fuck? We're just having a normal conversation. Do you know what dude means? What does it mean? I don't even know what he's saying. Please watch this. What is this? Yeah, okay, dude. So all you niggas, whites and brown beaters, taquaches. See, see, I'm Mexican. I can say what's up, nigga. Que pasa, wey? Que pasa, wey? You saw the shit? Hey, you saw the shit? Hey, you saw? Hey, we make the name. I don't endorse this. I mean, it's funny, but don't do that. Okay. Anyway, um, this is from my hometown. Sadly, what is this? The replies, man is genuinely shocking to see the amount of racism that's been allowed to openly foment on this website. So much talent. 
ENG training. What happened? It's mostly just whenever whenever shit like this pops off, it's always like it's always now I can't see I'm only seeing people comment on the commenters, but I never get to see the racism. I'm too late to the racism, guys. What if you get a pass like your boy did? I will tell you a wonderful story. Simple one. It happened to me a year ago. Around oh my god. Okay, this is such an old fucking Zizek clip. It always... Sh this, this is getting resurfaced now because he's like recently been like extra racist on Arabs. So it's like they're... But this is a classic. This is a classic Zizek. On the corner here in the bookstore, I was signing a book of mine. Two black guys asked me to sign a book and seeing them there, I couldn't resist the worst racist remark. When I was returning the books to them, I told them, you know, now I don't know which one is for whom, you know, you blacks like yellow guys, you look all the same. They embraced me and they told me, you can call me nigger. <laughs> Real stories that have definitely happened. Bro, this is your homie dog. Wait, what? No, he is not my homie. What the fuck? Why is he my homie? The thing about the... The thing about Balkan men is that, as far as I understand, they are too busy hating each other to hate black people. That's why, like, Serbia, for example, is, is like, memed as, like, the least anti-black nation in Europe. So maybe Zizek hits that note. I don't know. Who knows? Seems like he is, uh, he, he's definitely... My observation is that people are born one way or another. It is not a choice. People should find mutual love and happiness where their heart leads them. I only ask of my gay friends that they have children for the continuance of this civilization. What? What is... Yo, Elon has the, the, the weirdest breeding fetish, dude. I don't fucking get it. Slovenians are exempt for their inter-Balkan hate for the most part. <laughs> You're a Balkan man. Uh, I... Technically, uh, you know, the, the Balkan categorization goes pretty fucking broad, so you're not wrong. When he says my gay friends, he's talking about Don Lamont. He's off the rails again. What's he fucking doing? This is, o this is over the course of a single day. Stephen Miller on the Democrat scheme to allow illegal aliens in the country so they will be counted in the U.S. Senate, giving them more electoral power. California would have half the electoral college votes it has right now, but for illegal immigration. Wow. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. You know what's crazy? We swapped from fucking megaphonics to Evan, okay? Evan is basically the megaphonics on Twitter. Stop sending me Evan links. I don't want to see what the fuck's going on with this dumb fuck. Not Evan. Evan is great, but fucking Elon Musk is not, okay? This argument is so fucking stupid. Abolish the Electoral College then, you fucking assholes. How about that? How about we abolish the Electoral College then? You got the smoke for this? You're like, oh man, illegal immigrants. Illegal immigrants are coming in over our border so that California can have Electoral College votes. Okay, fine. Abolish the Electoral College, cocksucker. You won't do it. You won't do it. Republicans haven't won a fucking popular vote. Republicans won one fucking popular vote in the past 30 goddamn years. The fuck do you mean? The fuck do you mean?
Of course, Megaphonics in the replies, by the way. Of course. Sure seems like the people he follows are in arms race to continually find the most racist, uh, outrageously racist and hateful things they can shove in front of his face every day, every post. It has all to be even more egregious and hateful than the one before. It does not bode well. Megaphonics. It just... <laughs> Fucking got him, dude. Of course. Evan is way more Elon obsessed than me. Dude tweets multiple times about a single Elon tweet. It's just funny. You're right. You're, of course, you're right. It's just funny how much you love obsessing over Elon Musk. <laughs> also, you can't say Evan is obsessed with Elon Musk when you're in his replies continuing the obsession. Anyway, look at these sexy ass fucking fits. Megaphonics is always going to catch strays when we're doing. This is your real homie. Russian is gooning, G-O-O-N-I-N-G. Uh, grooming or gooning? Gooning, G-O-O-N-I-N-G. It means basically uh, being transfixed with porn video porn for like 24 48 hours straight uh, straight's the right word there uh, <laughs> and 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 Goonie. it struck me now i know this is gonna sound hard mr bonicello i have heard that you have taken copious amounts of mushrooms only to go on a 25 hour gooning session. <laughs> I'm stroking my shit, but it's left leaning. Okay, stop. Harsh. But it struck me that even though this crowd considered itself bohemian, and even though this crowd considered itself, um, uh, uh, what would you say? Uh, uh, Anti-establishment. It struck me this was exactly the crowd that would go over to fascism. The expression is gooning, G-O-O-N-I-N-G. Uh, grooming or gooning? Gooning. G Why is Norm talking about gooning? Because someone introduced him to the internet, which was a big mistake. Go, All right, let's talk about some good news. Oh boy, good news. The United States is suing Apple in a landmark iPhone monopoly lawsuit. That's right. The Department of Justice is going after Apple for violating antitrust, federal antitrust law. What is going on? Now, this is the, exactly the type of shit that I want to see from the Brandon regime. Okay. This is what I want to see. I want to see this kind of, I want to see this energy in an election year. This is what I want to see. Okay. Taking down big tech corporations for violating Sherman. Restore the Maoist Third World Disorder. The Patriots are ready to go, sir. Brandon, give us. Brandon, give us the order and we'll, we will execute. My Korean boyfriend always laughs his ass off when you play this. He laughs his ass off because he knows this is the best thing that's ever come out of North Korea. South Korea could never. What does South Korea have? K-pop. What does North Korea have? Cholima on the wing. Okay. You can only arrive at this beat. 
and this much energy and spirit when you firmly hold on to your belief in the immortal science of Marxist, Leninist, Jushaism, okay? That is the only way you can create this, okay? And K-pop. I feel very unsafe in this community, gymnasium brother. <laughs> Wait, what? I'm joke. <laughs> Fucking hard, man. It goes so hard. Chalima on the wing got me feeling like a left book fucking poster thinking that they're eating hamburger every day in North Korea, okay? Like, how could they have made such a good banger if they're not eating hamburger every day? Oh, it goes so hard. And they got the drip too. By the way, notice how all the trains, like, they're slowly moving and they never show the front of the train. That's because Koreans are pulling the trains. Um, on Fear and months ago, you said this sounds like old Turkish pop songs. A little bit, yeah. Anyway, uh, let's get back to the Brandon regime, okay, instituting, uh, utilizing the Department of Justice to go after uh, antitrust Trust busters like Apple. Garland, he's going to be laying out this case against Apple. Uh, let's go to that. Uh, line. Good morning. Earlier today, the Department of I'm Justice, pee real quick. joined by 15 states and the District of Columbia, sued Apple in the U.S. District Court for the District of New Jersey for violating Section 2 of the Sherman Antitrust Act. Over the last two decades, Apple has become one of the most valuable public companies in the world. Today, its net income exceeds the individual gross domestic product of more than 100 countries. That is in large part due to the success of the iPhone, Apple's signature smartphone product. For over a decade, iPhone sales have made up a majority of Apple's annual revenue. Today, Apple's share of the U.S. performance smartphone market exceeds 70 percent, and its share of the entire U.S. smartphone market exceeds 65%. Apple charges as much as nearly $1,600 for an iPhone. But as our complaint alleges, Apple has maintained monopoly power in the smartphone market, not simply by staying ahead of the competition on the merits, but by violating federal antitrust law. Consumers should not have to pay higher prices because companies break the law. We allege that Apple has employed a strategy that relies on exclusionary, anti-competitive conduct that hurts both consumers and developers. For consumers, that has meant fewer choices, higher prices and fees, lower quality smartphones, apps and accessories, and less innovation from Apple and its competitors. For developers, that has meant being forced to play by rules that insulate Apple from competition. And as outlined in our complaint, we allege that Apple has consolidated its monopoly power, not by making its own products better, but by making other products worse. Apple carries out its exclusionary anti-competitive conduct in two principal ways. First, Apple- You just want to be EU Parliament so bad, objectively, American existence would be like, noticeably better, 10% better. Almost immediately, if we started implementing some quality of life adjustments that, like, European Union regulators do on a regular basis. Like, universal fucking, like, universalizing uh, the, 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 um, the, the power cords, you know what I mean? Like, half the time, 
when we inevitably get stuff here that are good quality of life adjustments, it is a consequence of EU regulation making its way here as well because it inevitably is cheaper to just mass produce the same product. So yeah, these are this is like the nerdy shit that happens in the background, right? This is the nerdy shit that happens in the background where the government is actually working. Unfortunately, the government rarely works uh, in this direction, in this direction in the United States of America. But I do think that it's, it, it is a good thing. Like, here, here's another Brandon example I will use, right? Um, what did he do recently with the credit cards? Like hidden fees. Um, yeah, here's a here's another thing. Credit card late uh, credit card late fees are going to be capped at eight dollars. Junk fees, going after junk fees. Like these are small things that the government should absolutely do that will yield uh, a a tremendous amount of popular support. Okay, especially if they do a good enough job of promoting what they're doing. Okay, get rid of those fees on concert tickets, in my honest opinion. Yes, going after price gougers. A lot of this stuff is good. Um, I think uh, Adam Conover, friend of the show, Adam Conover's The G Word Netflix series, which was co-produced by Obama. Sorry to tell you, or, or I think Obama was featured in it. But regardless is pretty good at showcasing all the stuff that happens in the background that you basically take for granted that keeps society together uh, and, and stop it from collapsing completely that are very necessary that we just kind of take for granted. It is, it is the other side of government that rarely gets coverage but is important, okay? Okay. I love this and agree with you 100%, but it's also just one thing that Brandon wants to use to distract us from a shitty foreign policy in Israel-Palestine. This isn't a good thing. You can't be a monopoly of your own universe. Apple owned and more importantly created the stack top to bottom. Apple have no more a monopoly on iPhones than Sony has a monopoly on PlayStations or you have a monopoly of being Hasanabi. Wait, what? Sorry, we made it, so it doesn't matter is an insane way to fucking argue on this issue. Especially because, especially because it doesn't matter. It, it, it literally does not matter. Monopoly on the smartphone market is more than the fo uh, phone market itself, chatter. No, it, it straight up does not matter. Just because a company got like really successful on its own doesn't mean that they can't be violating antitrust rules they absolutely can and apple absolutely is okay and and breaking some of these uh some of the the uh, the monopoly power that these massive corporations have will literally yield consumer benefits okay yeah it's about the software. It's like Microsoft lawsuits over Internet Explorer. Remember that? Remember how good that was? I mean, Microsoft still does its very best to try and fucking shove Internet Explorer down your goddamn throat. But like, but think about that. In a total vacuum, sure, a company can develop and sell whatever they want within the framework of the law. But what's being litigated here is the nature of Apple as one of the only two major industry players in the mobile space. That necessarily restricts what they're allowed to do. Plus, we don't even have Huawei. You know what I mean? Okay. You can go and drink water. Go, go drink your water, baby. When will you wear wigs? Why? <laughs> yeah, now they're trying to make us edge. I know. So having a successful company and having a lot of people use your product equals bad. Wait, you don't have to ban that guy. Come on. 
Come on, mods. That's crazy. Like, yeah, he's being contentious and he's a, a debate derailer, but... Or, oh, never mind. He got Fossabot timed out because <laughs> he was spamming. Mods didn't do that. Fossabot did it because my man was going crazy with it. Man, I wonder how many people just get straight clapped by Fossabot because they're just spamming like crazy and then they think the moderators are the ones who fucking ban them. And then... <laughs> And then just develop like a permanent hate boner for me and this community in general. <laughs> ...imposes contractual restrictions and fees that limit the features and functionality that developers can offer iPhone users. Second... Apple selectively restricts access to the points of connection between third-party apps and the iPhone's operating system, degrading the functionality of non-Apple apps and accessories. As a result, for most of the past 15 years, Apple has collected a tax in the form of a 30% commission on the price of any app downloaded from the App Store, as well as on in-app purchases. Apple is able to command these fees from companies of all sizes. Apple has also suppressed the emergence of programs like... Um, by the way, officially, the corrupt tea, capitalism and decay tea, and the lib tour hoodie and the skull tea have been sold out, so now they are on back order. So... It'll take a longer time. I wanted it. Uh, I wanted it to not run out like it always does. It already fucking ran out. It already sold out, but it's on back order. So it'll take a little bit longer for you to receive it if you buy it from this point on, but at least you'll be able to get it. Okay. And not have to wait for another six months until you can uh, maybe get it on, maybe uh, get it if we. Uh, if we if we decide to drop it again. <clears throat> Is that why a sub on mobile costs more than a desktop on Twitch? Yup. Temu would have got it to me faster. I'm literally trying to airplay you to a fire TV right now, and it's twice as many steps as last time I did this. Fuck Apple. Anyway. Have you ever wondered how we... Why can't you just make infinite merch, you burly buffoon? I mean, I am literally making infinite merch. I'm explaining to you why it's infinite merch. We run into this issue every single time. I don't think you guys understand. We purchase pretty much the entirety of Bayside's uh, available stock. Okay? Every single time we do one of these drops, we pretty much buy everything they have ahead of time. Okay? Okay? Yes, back order is the same quality. It just takes it's the only difference between back order is that it'll take a little bit longer for you to receive it. That's it. You've worn a shirt with a burning Confederate flag before, and I thought it was your merch, but it's not. Do you remember where you got that? Uh yeah, that's a fan who who took uh, one of my quotes about how the Confederates are losers and turn it into fan art and then made t-shirts off of it. Yeah, ladders included. Can I get the overcoat and the hoodie pick? 
if you go to Italy and go to the Vatican and shop where the priests shop at, you will be able to purchase that overcoat. I think it's called Barbicone or something. You look like if Bad Bunny was capitalized and bolded. Thank you. How's oh, the quality of the sweater? Is the print going to get messed up if I wash it? I mean, I'm wearing it, and this has gone through many washes, so no. All right, let's cloud streaming apps, including gaming apps, as well as super apps that could reduce user dependence on Apple's own operating system and expensive hardware. And as any iPhone user who has ever seen a green text message or received a tiny, grainy video can attest, Apple's anti-competitive conduct also includes making it more difficult for iPhone users to message with users of non-Apple products. It does this by diminishing the functionality of its own messaging app and by diminishing the functionality of third-party messaging apps. By doing so, Apple knowingly and deliberately degrades quality, privacy, and security for its users. For example, if an iPhone user messages a non-iPhone user in Apple Messages, the text appears not only as a green bubble, but incorporates limited functionality. The conversation is not encrypted, videos are pixelated and grainy, and users cannot edit messages or see typing indicators. As a result, iPhone users perceive rival smartphones as being lower quality because the experience of messaging friends and family who do not... He's so, they're so right about this. <clears throat> they're so fucking right about this. Like, this is an immediate improvement for... All consumers, by the way, like, and the only reason why you would want this to maintain, like the only reason why you would want this still is so that you can call Android users like broke boys and, and feel special. And I say this as someone who's never had an Android. I say this as someone who is uh, a, a firmly committed Apple user. I have an iPhone. I have an Apple MacBook laptop. I have an Apple Watch. I think it's ridiculous that there is no cross-pollination and you can't use other products and it, you're like trapped in the Apple family. I find it very silly. I think that this is a pro-consumer move and the only reason why you would want this, you're just a cuck. What? No, the only reason why you would want to maintain this is because you perceive it as like a status symbol. Well, you choose to be Apple as an odd statement. I don't have an issue using Apple products. Okay. But I do think that it would be better overall for every single consumer if there was more cross-pollination, if like uh, all of the apps could be utilized uh, across the board and had all of the same, uh, had all of the same fucking uh, options. Not own iPhones is worse, even though Apple is the one responsible for breaking cross-platform messaging, and it does so intentionally. For example, in 2013, a senior executive at Apple explained that supporting cross-platform messaging in Apple Messages, quote, would simply serve to remove an obstacle to iPhone families giving their kids Android phones, close quote. In 2022, Apple's CEO was asked whether Apple would fix 
iPhone to Android messaging. The questionnaire added, quote, not to make it personal, but I can't send my mom certain videos, close quote. Apple CEO, CEO. It does seem kind of stupid when you talk about this, like, because you got like Merrick Garland talking about something so silly that people have made memes about, but it's like this kind of little, it's exactly uh, the, the, this like little shit that, uh, impacts daily user experience, daily consumer experience that will yield tremendous benefit for all consumers across the board. This is millions, tens of millions of people, if not hundreds of millions of people that will have a better consumer experience overall. The CEO responded, buy your mom an iPhone. In addition to selectively controlling app distribution and creation, we allege that Apple is violating the law by conditionally restricting developers access to- I think you don't know anything about the tech behind messaging, so you should probably learn about it before talking on it with such certainty. I don't think I need to understand the tech behind messaging to say that like, this should be, this should be uh, like the, the, the amenities that Apple offers should also go across uh, all of the platforms. Like I, I, that's all I'm simply stating. You need to know about encryption and standards. Okay. Well, while I don't understand about encryption and standards, I still think that it should still be allowed by everyone. You are doing the Apple line here, which is this making it, Making it readily available for every other fucking product is going to like limit Apple's security or whatever, which I do agree. I think Apple does care about security for sure and privacy, even though they do also obviously, uh, you know, internally allow other apps to steal and, and suck all of your data. Having said that, they just need to add RCS to iPhone, then it'll all be good. Yeah, like unless you personally believe that Google does not have encryption standards, which is a silly thing to argue for. Um, I don't know what to tell you. Like, Apple announced that RCS support is coming to iPhone next year. Apple has announced today that it will adopt the RCS rich communication services messaging standard. The feature will launch via a software update later next year and bring a wide range of iMessage style features to messaging between iPhone and Android users. So you're, so I guess that you're advocating for something that Apple has already seen partially because they knew this was coming and has already decided to move in the direction of. And this is from 2023, November 16, 2023. I assume that this is, you're a moron. I, for one, like my battery drains quicker when I do not upgrade. The move for RCS is due to China. I don't know if it's for China. It's probably EU, right? EU forced Apple to use RCS. Google tries publicly shaming Apple into adopting RCS. Here's a video of Marquez explaining how Apple gate keeps his messaging app. That's 20 minutes. I don't want to watch 20 minute video. Apple folds for a third time to the EU, and it means iPhone users can now get red receipts when texting their Android friends. Does Hassan not like 
Uh, Marcus Brownlee, no, I, I love his videos. It's just 20 minutes. To the interface, which is needed to make an app functional on the Apple operating system. For a product like a smartwatch or a digital wallet to be useful to an iPhone user, it must be able to communicate with the iPhone's operating system. But Apple creates barriers that make it extremely difficult and expensive for both users and developers to venture outside the Apple ecosystem. When it comes to smartwatches, Apple not only drives users to purchase an Apple Watch, which is only compatible with an iPhone, it also uses its technical and contractual controls to make it harder for someone with an iPhone to use a non-Apple smartwatch. And when it comes to digital wallets, Apple's exclusionary conduct goes a step further. Digital wallets allow users to store and use passes and credentials in a single app, including credit cards, personal identification, movie tickets, and car keys. Apple Wallet is Apple's proprietary digital wallet on the iPhone. Apple actively encourages banks, merchants, and other parties to participate in Apple Wallet, but it simultaneously exerts its monopoly power to block these same partners from developing alternative payment products and services for iPhone users. For example, Apple has blocked third-party developers from... Here's the thing, okay? I will explain why this is good for Apple consumers as an Apple consumer myself. And I hope that you will understand, okay? In an environment where Apple doesn't try to create a walled garden of like only Apple family products, and this, it seems like if this goes through, um, Apple will be forced to make changes. Apple will have to compete with everyone else, both on the hardware and software side, by simply making better hardware and better software. Okay? If Apple's overarching popularity relies on its inability or relies on its restrictions uh, as it pertains to applications or as it pertains to hardware that is not in the Apple family, that actually stifles innovation. Okay? This is why I'm saying more competition is actually beneficial for the consumer themselves. You, this will directly lead to better consumer experiences for those who have Apple products. The other side of this is that Apple engages in price leadership or at least like restriction leadership in this regard which will create which will get other companies you know Google I guess is the only other major player in this space to also try to create a restrictive ecosystem okay whereas being able to purchase a Samsung or Google hardware and use it with ease with Apple hardware and software is beneficial for you. It's actually a good thing. You just cannot imagine the streamless, I mean, uh, the seamless, sorry, not streamless, the seamless communication that your Apple products have with your Apple iPhone being, uh, being the same for non-Apple products as well. Okay. That's part of the reason why you are claiming that this will be a bad thing. Why have any proprietary hardware or software at that point? Then it's a dumb argument. I mean, don't get me started on this. It's not though. It's on Apple's protecting its user experience. They have, they already compete on hardware and software bad take to be honest apple has been innovating a lot lately with their hardware and software this is just forcing them to use other stuff i think they should be forced to use other people's stuff because if they are forced to to have universal standards for non-apple products they will then be forced to make that experience as seamless 
for other hardware and software that's non-Apple, I want, maybe I want a fucking, then don't buy Apple products. No, because when you buy a non-Apple product, it doesn't fucking connect to your iPhone as easily as an Apple product. The other side of this is also that if you have only Apple products and you want to fucking use it on a Steam Deck, the connectivity is much harder. Apple should be making products that are easy to integrate into other fucking... That's why I don't buy other stuff. Yeah, that's the whole point, dumbass. That's why you don't buy other stuff. You're literally talking about this restriction that Apple has imposed upon you. You are advocating for being cucked further. As the government is doing something, finally, for once, that takes steps against that. This is just cultish thinking, I think. It doesn't make any sense. It genuinely does not make any sense. You have been conditioned into hating Google and Windows, which aren't great companies either, for the record. They have their own fucking issues. But you've been conditioned into hating these other ecosystems because... They are incredibly, because Apple is incredibly restrictive, and so are these guys as well in some respects, into using uh, competitors' hardware and software. That's the problem. This makes it so that you have choice. You can have an Apple iPhone if you think that the Apple iPhone is better, okay, on, on specs and on pricing, and then turn around and use your Apple iPhone with a product that Google made, like Google headphones or something or a, a non-apple headphone that you can easily fucking incorporate and it's as seamless as like basically connecting to your own apple uh uh your your own apple uh headphones but why stick with apple until now if you didn't like it for that reason wait what do you mean why don't we apply the standard to automakers too they repair their parts don't work together I mean, if you're comparing uh, how restrictive Apple is when it comes to repair in comparison to like auto manufacturers, I don't know what to tell you, but we already do have standardized stuff in auto manufacturing, like auto repair. And even then... There is no auto manufacturer that has... What is this? New York Times diagram explains the Apple monopoly pretty well. Top of the... God damn it, dude. Take USB-C as an example. They probably would have started adoption earlier if it wasn't for their overall proprietary advantage. Exactly. USB-C being universalized is good, is beneficial for everyone. You don't need to get, like, dumbass fucking uh, Apple lightning rods or whatever the fuck. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. Now you can share the fucking... Now you can share a singular charger. It makes no sense. I, I genuinely cannot comprehend. That's why Tesla isn't great because we can only use Tesla auto repair shops instead of any auto repair shop. Exactly. Tesla is good for its war against uh, uh, car dealerships, but it's bad when it comes to repair for this exact same reason. Well, this and many other reasons actually, because like when your fucking car has like a crumple, it basically, that's not really true, it's like half true. I genuinely feel like, um, no, Hassan, people buy Apple products because people like having many different charger standards. You just don't understand technology. Yeah, I, I legitimately don't understand it. It's like advocating against universal chargers for electric vehicles. You know what I mean? Like being a Tesla fanboy and being like, well, Elon invented the supercharger that's like much better than all of the other fucking EV chargers. So he should be able to fucking maintain the, the, his supercharger supremacy, which is fucking ridiculous. The fuck are you talking about? Every single argument that you've made so far basically just says, I like being in the in club, in the Apple, in the Apple club. How will I feel superior to other fucking consumers with, with, uh, my, my expensive ass gear?
Like, let's apply the standard to gaming consoles. I want my Xbox controller to work with my PS5. Dude, don't even get me fucking started on that. Oh my God. Dude, I've compared, <laughs> I've compared universalizing, uh, like the, the console controller buttons to slavery before. Okay. I have a very famous rant on this while playing Zelda. Are you kidding me? Yes, we should do that. Controller uh, compatibility and universalizing all the buttons should happen. The problem is everyone in everyone in any kind of like legislative body that has regulatory power is 857 years old. So they don't remember. They don't know anything about fucking consoles. So we can't even have this conversation. Uh, here's the part where you said it was like slavery. Oh my God. Here, let's see. I'm not going to do this right now. Anyway. Do you see where Sony took away movies people bought on the PlayStation Store? I did. It was fucking bullshit. Chatter acting like this is a gotcha, but more open systems would be good for consumers. Only just now we've gotten some cross play. I know cross platform play. Exactly. I think it's so stupid. Yeah, you're literally pointing to like other things that I agree with and that should happen while trying to defend one thing that I disagree with. Are Steam Decks worth it? Yes. I fucking love my Steam Deck. Guys, I'm a ride or die Steam Decker, okay? Straight up. It's so fucking good. It's the best piece of tech that I have purchased in the last decade. Think about it this way. My Steam Deck is my daily driver for gaming. I literally use it more for gaming than I do my PC. I have a supercomputer and I can't, I don't even fucking, I have a supercomputer. I have a PlayStation 5. The Steam Deck is so goaded. Anyway, uh, but yeah, I got owned again. Make no mistake. Top of the hour ad break is here and I am going to run the top of the hour ad break now. Universalize the top of the hour ad breaks. And if you no longer want to see those ads, well, there's one way. There's a couple different methods that you can use to, to avoid seeing those ads. Okay. Oh, is this an ad for Steam? No. You honestly think this is about us? You don't think this is about the government wanting a backdoor and weak in iOS security? Android has backdoors. Would love for you to comment on this. That's the only part of this that I think is, like, probably valid. But I do think that Apple already... There's already ways into Apple as well. I don't disagree that Apple has a monopoly and is acting monopolistic in certain things. However, your tech takes are right on par with the 80 plus year olds that are making tech legislation. Really? iOS also has back doors. I'm, I'm certain. Oh. <sighs> You can't claim Ferrari would be a better car if they had to support Honda engines. What? Dude, the government is not fucking forcing. The government is not forcing Apple to use Android hardware. Okay, like to strip Apple hardware and put Android components into it. What kind of fucking comparison is this? I don't understand. That's why the actual analog here is Tesla superchargers. Okay? Tesla superchargers is a better example. There are, comp there are competitors in the marketplace for EVs. 
The problem is they can't utilize Tesla superchargers. And allow and universalizing Tesla superchargers and ensuring that there's one standard for all electric vehicles is a good thing that will open up the space. That way, people can focus on making better products, better EVs overall, and not simply use that as a competitive advantage. The reason why you guys don't want to use the USB-C comparison or the supercharger comparison is because you understand that that kind of destroys the argument that you have because I don't think your argument is a, a valid one. I think your argument stems from, I want to maintain Apple supremacy. Because let's be real, as an Apple user, as a fucking lifelong Apple product user myself, there is definitely that element of like, having Apple products and therefore it's just better. It's just more specs. Like you're, you're, you're so tapped in to, uh, the cult of Apple that you feel like one aspect that Apple brings to the table, your take on this is just not good. You will never be able to convince me personally with the exception of the backdoor shit that, uh, Forcing Apple to utilize industry standards, like creating universal industry standards is a bad thing, okay? Imagine if everyone was forced to use Safari is exactly the point, exactly. Thank God that that doesn't happen. Both sides are dorks. Apple, Apple users think they're cool and rich for having it like it's 2007 and Android users think anyone gives a fuck about what their stupid device can do. I agree. Lots of people on the Apple subreddit complaining about this. Yes, because one part, one part of owning Apple products is the, it, it, that instills brand loyalty is the fact that you have an Apple product and you have a lot of like cool stuff that you don't want others to have. So it's a, a part of the marketing. It's a part of the brand. It's a part of how you develop brand loyalty to it. Everyone isn't forced to use Safari. You can buy other products for fuck's sake. No, but this is akin to everyone using... Uh, is akin to everyone using uh, Safari. But because Safari is not a better product than all of the other competitors in the market, you don't see it as such. If Safari was a, it's ironic because like Microsoft already tried this with, uh, with, with the internet Explorer anyway. Open source brands never work well with each other. Anyways, that's what Apple does. Well, no, that's also not true. A big part of the reason why the open source brands never work well with each other is because Apple doesn't work well with open source brands. That's the whole point. You're, I am a fucking tech boomer, and I still recognize that it is. this is literally the problem that they're trying to eliminate. creating competing digital wallets on the iPhone. They use what is known as tap to pay functionality. That is the function that makes a digital wallet, well, a wallet. Instead, Apple forces those who want to use the wallet function to share personal information with Apple, even if they would prefer to share that information solely with their bank, medical provider, or other trusted third party. When an iPhone user puts a credit or debit card in an Apple wallet, Apple inserts itself into the process 
that would otherwise occur directly between the user. There's something you need to understand here. Hardware and software relationships will always we weaponize compa compatibility for anti-competitive purposes. Wait, what? I do understand that. And I don't think that that should exist. That's, that's the whole point that I'm making. And that's what I'm trying to explain to Apple fanboys as an Apple fanboy, my fucking self. Okay. I mean, dude, come on. Like, look, dude, what, 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 what more do I need to show you? You know what I mean? I use the, the, I have, uh, the, the Apple, what is it? The fucking plus the big bulky headphones. I have the in-ear Apple headphones. I have pretty much every fucking Apple product with the exception of the Vision Pro or whatever. Yeah, I have the AirPod Plus. I have the AirPods. I have everything that's Apple. I use almost completely, I use Apple. I have an Apple TV. Wait, are you an Apple fanboy because you're forced to be? Would you have bought a Samsung watch if you could have? Maybe. If it had the same ease of compatibility, potentially, I probably I probably would have. If there was like a like a easy if there was an easy app integration and it didn't require so much more. Yeah, I probably would have. A big part of why I use Apple products across the board is because it's the fucking easiest. Like it, it just, it just works so seamlessly, so perfectly. You don't own a Sony TV and saying no Apple TV is a. But I love Apple products. That is in part because Apple systematically boxes out third parties products and services from gaming to digital wallets, limiting choice and blocking potentially better products from emerging. Apple even sacrifices short term gains to maintain this power. Apple's better at privacy from degrading the security of text messages to selling your data to foreign governments. Apple's cloak of privacy is a mainly self-serving branding strategy. Apple can improve privacy at any time without engaging in anti-competitive products. Yeah, Garmin smartwatches are way better on Android than Apple, but the drawback on Android is that you have to do a little bit of work, in this case, downloading their own apps. You can't even develop stuff for iOS without being forced into buying a fucking Mac. It's very annoying. I think we, they should make phones with worse cameras. I think everyone looked better when we couldn't see them as good. I agree. People are misunderstanding the lawsuit. Apple is intentionally blocking integration from third parties, which is the issue. Not that first party is better. Inter not that first party integration is better. Like this entire lawsuit fixes a lot of the things that you are holding on to as a benefit thinking that it will be worse overall in the long run for you when the only thing that the only thing that this takes away is an air of superiority that you might feel by having an apple product that's literally it that's why i'm saying i don't think you recognize that like i, I don't think you personally recognize that that's kind of what you're advocating for It doesn't make sense. It's just eliminating the social capital that you have by having an Apple product while also opening up as a consumer, opening up as a consumer uh, for you to utilize so many different products, like a wide range of products that is seamlessly integrated. Because if this is forced, if this is forced, then Apple has to maintain its same seamless transition with third-party developers uh, on the software side and also products that are not inside of the Apple family. 
there are currently obviously products that they allow that are in the Apple family. You see them when you go to the Apple store. But this would force Apple to basically uh, create that same transition, that same seamless transition with every fucking uh, product because that's what competition is. Realistically, Apple isn't even competing on hardware and software. They're competing on ecosystem, but ecosystems are inherently anti-competitive. Exactly. They must be forced to compete for each product category separately, and if their products are all the best in class, they can work well together. What Apple has is a walled garden. Precisely the case, yes. And the card issuer. This introduces an additional potential point of failure for the privacy and security of Apple users. And that is just one way in which Apple is willing to make the iPhone less secure and less private in order to maintain its monopoly power. The Supreme Court defines monopoly power as, quote, the power to control prices or exclude competition. As set out in our complaint, Apple has that power in the smartphone market. Now, having monopoly power does not itself violate the antitrust laws, but it does when a firm acquires or maintains monopoly power, not because it has a superior product or superior business acumen, but by engaging in exclusionary conduct. As set out in our A lot of what makes them good is software efficiency is not entirely a hardware thing. Yes, it does. But that software efficiency would be forced upon Apple for all non-Apple products if they were basically forced to literally utilize all matter of different... Apple is Hassan's one corpo blind spot? Wait, what? No, it's the exact opposite. The fuck corpo lover? Corpo lover? Are you misunderstanding the point I'm making? What the fuck's wrong with you? No, I'm, I'm anti-corporate here. What the fuck? I'm saying the government literally regulating this so that Apple is forced to create better software and better seamless consumer experiences for those who want to use non-Apple products is quite literally the opposite of what you think I'm saying. <sighs> Our complaint, Apple has maintained its power not because of its superiority, because of its unlawful exclusionary behavior. Monopolies like Apple's threaten the free and fair markets upon which our economy is based. They stifle innovation. They hurt producers and workers, and they increase costs for consumers. If left unchallenged, Apple will only continue to strengthen its smartphone monopoly. But there's a law for that the Justice Department will vigorously enforce antitrust law. Enforcing the law protects consumers from higher prices and fewer choices. That is the Justice Department's legal obligation. That is what the American people expect. That is what they deserve. I am... You should use an Android. I mean... Maybe, maybe in the fucking future. Controversial Texas law, it's called SB4, would give state and local police unprecedented authority to arrest people who they think might be in this. The Biden admin is also coming after food delivery services. Have you ever used a food delivery app to order a meal but notice a much higher end price? It's called drip pricing and it adds up. My administration is working to end this practice over junk fees. Yeah, that's great. I think this shit's also lame as hell. Like, I want to give all the money to the fucking driver. I don't want to give money to the delivery app. I already... Like, it's crazy. This shit sucks. Hidden fees, junk fees, they're ass cheeks. And they add up over the course of a year. I'm willing to bet that the average consumer over the course of a year is probably... I'm sure there's data for this. I don't know what, what it is, but I'm willing to bet that, like, it's it adds up to thousands of dollars a year. Dollar here, two dollars there, four dollars here. It fucking adds up. This all is to get votes. They wouldn't care if the polls were not in their favor. Wait, what do you mean? That's all politics. I'm not going to literally yell at the Biden administration 
for not doing things that are good in order to win votes and then yell at them when they are doing things to win votes. That is the entire point of being in office. Yes. What is happening here? Yeah, they should be buying our votes. That is what politics is about. You're now getting mad at them for doing good things that are beneficial to consumers, actually regulating, because you're like, well, they just want to win our votes. It's like, yeah, dude, it's called being a fucking, you know, a functioning government. What's next, dude? Are you going to be like, wow, dude, the guy working at McDonald's doesn't really have love for making burgles and is simply doing this so he can survive and live and get a paycheck. Yeah, I know. That's kind of the point. <sighs> I can explain the part of the Apple thing that pe I think people think you aren't getting. I broadly agree, though. It is pretty funny that we are so far removed from the government actually taking action that is beneficial to consumers that when they do actually do that, we're like, what the fuck? This seems indecent. No, man, it's not. It is decent. It is expected. It is what should happen. I remember covering this when, uh, what's his face? What the fuck? Mark Lamont Hill just texted me. crazy there's got to be a there's got to be a friend of his or something watching because i was just talking about how he hasn't responded to my text messages and he says sorry mr text been buried Anyway, let's move away from the Apple thing. And move on to Biden clashing with the Governor Abbott in Texas over controversial immigration law. This country illegally. Now it's blocked. It's pretty funny. Biden is like, SB4 is bad, Jack. And then four years later, he's like, actually, we're implementing a universal federal law where we can do SB4 in the entire country and the republicans are the ones stopping us from doing that for now but the issue you said you remember covering this one oh i was talking about i was gonna bring up something else i think mitt romney was was complaining about the biden administration early on uh wanting to like win votes by giving money to the population i think it might have been like child tax credit or something i don't really remember But, uh, but at the time, people were basically, was it, oh, student loan debt relief. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Student loan debt relief, which, you know, unfortunately didn't come uh, as, as it was uh, supposed to happen. And I thought it was so ridiculous that, like, we are so far removed from the government actually doing shit that is positive for broad chunks of society that people actually use that as a, as a counter. Like it shows the underlying cynicism. It shows the underlying skepticism that we have with the government doing things that like we, we can so easily cast aside doing good things for the broader population as a cynical ploy to win uh, people's votes and it's like yeah that's called politics that's called government she was back in court yesterday omar Franca has the latest a contentious texas border law went under the microscope at the fifth circuit court of appeal you should check your ig ads there's an issue with one of the artworks on the t's
What? Well, it's GG's if there is an issue, okay? Austria is spelled Austeria. Well, there you go. There's a misprint. Hope you guys like it. Bills Wednesday. A three-judge panel heard arguments from both sides about the law's legality. One judge expressed concern that Texas was overstepping its authority. This is the first time, it seems to me, that uh, a state has claimed that they have the right to remove illegal aliens. I mean, this is not something that just that a power that historically has been exercised by states, has it? The Texas Solicitor General also faced questions on how... No, I think it's a conservative talking point more than what you think it is. This is a belief that the government should not be taking care of people. Yes, but I, I find it very strange when, like, supposedly progressive-minded individuals basically do that exact same sentiment, demonstrate that exact same sentiment. It is yet again another demonstration that the reactionary mind virus captivates all, no matter how progressive they think they are. Do you understand? That's what I'm saying. It's like people fucking personally also think I'm a leftist, I'm a communist, I'm a socialist, but also kind of weird, kind of kind of weird that the government's trying to win my votes. It's like, yeah, but yeah, bro, what the fuck? Would you say that about Medicare for all? You know what I mean? Man, sure don't understand why the government is actually doing Medicare for all and universalizing health care. They want to win my votes. You know, well, the law would be enforced. So what if someone enters in, let's say, from Mexico into Arizona and lives there for five years, then moves to Texas? Are they covered? I don't know the answer. Um, I could. I mean, I think that, you know, I, I, I'm reading the text, you know, maybe. However, another judge appeared to sympathize with the state's position. And we have no clue how any of this would actually be enforced because there's not been a single person who's been arrested, not a single person who's been ordered removed, not a single state judge who's had occasion to adjudicate a single provision of this in any way. Texas has a right to defend ourselves. And we Still, Abbott remains defiant. Even without SB4, Texas has the legal authority to arrest people coming across the razor wire barriers on our border and we will continue to use our arrest authority we don't know when the fifth circuit will make a ruling on s before but this is all happening while president biden is in texas for fundraisers he's in dallas this morning and he'll be headed to houston later on today for another event President Trump, former President Trump, facing new financial challenges, and he's now asking his supporters for additional help. He has until Monday to come up with nearly half a billion dollars. This is money he owes from his civil fraud trial. If he does not come up with that money, New York State could seize some of his properties. Nicole Killian has our story from Washington. Uh, Don Lamont, I just got update. Uh, Don Lamont is not in the building. He's not coming today. His team could not uh, secure a good time before I leave for Australia, unfortunately. So, unfortunately, Don Lamont is not going to be on un but until after I come back from Australia. Under increasing financial pressure, former President Trump put out a fundraising appeal Wednesday. He urged a million supporters to chip in and warn New York Attorney General Letitia James could seize his New York properties, including Trump Tower. We have a lot of cash and we have a great company, but they want to take it away. Trump must put up more than $460 million by next Monday to cover the amount of a civil fraud judgment. His attorney said it would be a practical impossibility after unsuccessful attempts to secure the bond from at least 30 companies. The AG's office dismissed their argument, saying there is nothing unusual about even billion-dollar judgments being fully bonded. And James said this to ABC News. If he does not have funds uh, to pay off the judgment, uh, then we will seek uh, you know, judgment enforcement mechanisms in court, and we will ask the judge 
to seize his assets. Yeah, we're going to talk about Georgia, this in a the second. former president got a slight reprieve. Fulton County Judge Scott McAfee allowed Trump's defense team to appeal his ruling, keeping District Attorney Fonnie Willis on the 2020 election interference case. I'm not on trial. It comes after Willis acknowledged a romantic relationship with ex-prosecutor Nathan Wade, who resigned last week. This Harry Littman is a former federal prosecutor. If she's disqualified, that's the most that could happen. It doesn't expressly uh, shut down the case. As the former president's legal issues mount, so are his bills. According to the latest federal election campaign filings, former President Trump's Save America PAC spent more than eight and a half million dollars on legal fees this year, while the Trump campaign has spent about one. Wait. This is a Trump Latino ad, new Trump ad targeting Latino voters. Let's fucking go, okay? He's done shit like this before. Wait, this is old, bro. What the fuck? This is AI, bro. I swear to God, this is AI. Yeah, this is old. This is from the last cycle. I remember this. He recently reposted it, but this is an old uh, ad. I remember covering this on stream. Okay, let me tell you something. This is not AI, but like it's uh, it is. I, I think it's like an early version of AI. Like it's not. It's not like Mid Journey or some shit. But I remember. Uh, I remember this. I've used this before. Fuck. I forget the app. This is literally a, this is straight up an app, dude. They made the, they cooked this up in like a fucking app. Do you think Trump's going to have a work a nine to five job now? <laughs> yeah. Rich people never do that. Okay. Yeah. It was a, I, it was like a, Good Lord. Meanwhile, you gave salsa songs that are against stuff like this, against capitalism from back in the day. The Latinx folks have fallen so far. I mean, it's. Wait, hold on. Glad to see you working nine to five for yay. Yeah, it's this. <laughs> Bro, I swear to God, it's this app. Like, I'm not even kidding. I I'm pretty sure it's this fucking app, dude. Wait, fuck. Hold on. I'm trying to find my, like, travel shit for Australia so I can send it to Will. It needs to be. I use this app. I've used this as well. The font and lyric transition look the same. Yeah, no, it, it is that app. I admit it's no city of Sultan, I tell you. Yeah. Uh, no, Murat's not coming to... Murat is not coming to Aus uh, Australia. Mm. 
Donc, okay. Kim Ross stream from the desktop then? No. Oh. Is there any movement on Maya going? No, I didn't even talk to Maya about coming. Okay. We're also following another big story and major developments in the Israel-Hamas war. Overnight, Secretary of State Antony Blinken announced the U.S. submitted a draft resolution to the U.N. Security Council calling for an immediate ceasefire in Gaza tied to the release of more hostages. The U.S. has previously vetoed any resolution that called for a pause in the war. Right now, Blinken is in Egypt, where he met with the president there, Al Sisi, before he travels to Israel tomorrow to meet with Israeli officials. Meanwhile, House Speaker Mike Johnson said this morning he is going to invite Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to deliver an address to a joint session of Congress as new aid packages remain stuck on Capitol Hill. Joining us now is NBC's Raf Sanchez in Tel Aviv, also with us, Evelyn Farkas, executive director of the McCain Institute, former senior advisor to the Supreme Allied Commander of Europe. Raf, what more can you tell us about this new U.S.-led resolution? So, Jose, in just the last couple of minutes, NBC News has obtained the language of this resolution, and it is by far the strongest of anything we have seen from the U.S. at the U.N. Security Council so far. It calls for an immediate and sustained ceasefire in Gaza tied to the release of those remaining hostages. Now, compare that to previous language the U.S. has been circulating, where they called for a temporary ceasefire as soon as practicable. So there is a real sense of urgency. Wow, real sense of urgency. Temporary ceasefire as soon as practicable. Like, it, it's like, bro, just say there needs to be a ceasefire. There's a humanitarian crisis occurring in Gaza. It is an ethnic cleansing that is happening, obviously. Okay. Hold on. Okay. Okay, he's talking about the previous one, I think. This one says sustained. In this latest draft of the resolution that we have not seen previously from the United States, we should be clear that while the U.S. has vetoed three previous U.N. Security Council resolutions calling for a ceasefire in Gaza, this isn't a complete 180. Those resolutions said an end to the fighting with or without a hostage deal. This resolution hinges that ceasefire on a hostage deal coming together from those talks underway right now in Qatar. But this is still a very marked shift. It shows the Biden administration really feeling the heat, both at home and abroad, to do more to address the suffering in Gaza. And Jose, this is also kind of a way for the U.S. to pile pressure on everybody sitting around that negotiating table in Doha, the Israelis, Hamas, and the Qataris, to say, look, it is the will of the international community at this point that you get together, that you make a deal that gets the hostages out, that gets humanitarian aid in, that pauses the fighting, and hopefully leads to an enduring and a permanent ceasefire in Gaza. Jose. Yeah, I mean, Evelyn, the, the Biden administration has been increasing the pressure on Israel specifically to try and avoid them invading Rafa and push towards a, a new ceasefire deal. What do you make of the administration's recent messaging here? I mean, I think, Jose, they're really coming out much more publicly and much more strongly against an offensive in Rafa and, frankly, you know, against the, uh, the way the IDF has been fighting the war. Um, they are essentially saying, stop, this is not a way to bring the hostages home. And they're responding to a couple of things. I mean, one, clearly, whatever they were saying behind the scenes, because I did have information that they were behind the scenes trying to tell the Israelis to, 
you know, make their use tactics that are less um, of a of a big, you know, hammer, if you will, and be more precise, and frankly, to transition to uh, peace talks and get the hostages out. So now they've gone public. They've also been responding, I think, to probably a bit of a coordinated effort with the Senate Majority Leader, Senator Schumer, who very clearly um, made a political statement um, with regard to Israel and how and, and what's happening with Gaza and the future, of course, outcome here. So I think they're moving towards, they're trying to move some more levers towards a, a hostage release and then ultimately a, a, a peace deal, if you will. And you see this new you know, shuttle diplomacy by the Secretary of State putting uh, real power and, and also real initiatives like bringing humanitarian aid um, to to Gaza separate from the Israelis um, and separate, frankly, from Hamas. These are real kind of power plays to try to move um, move the, the needle here and change the dynamic. And Evelyn, I want to turn to Evelyn. the war in Ukraine right now. You're, you're in Kyiv this morning. For the first time in 44 days, that city came under attack. What's it like there? Yeah, I mean, I think people are, um, they're tired because most of us were, you know, in a, in a shelter last night, a bomb shelter. Um, not, not all, not everyone has beds in those shelters. So um, people are tired and they're, and they're annoyed. But they also understand that when Russia undertakes this kind of attack, it's because Russia is feeling um, like it needs to take a revenge. And there are a couple things that you know, Russia could be taking revenge for. The Ukrainian forces have taken out a number of Russia's oil refineries. Um, some estimates say as much as 8% reduction in Russia, Russian oil exports might result because of the, the strikes that the Ukrainians have conducted inside Russian territory. So it could be, could be revenge uh, because of that. The, the Ukrainians have also taken down uh, a special Russian aircraft that helped with um, intelligence and surveillance, helped essentially identify the civilian and other targets that the Russians use here to target um, people in Kyiv, so Kyiv and elsewhere. So because the Russians essentially shot that aircraft down, which was an expensive and important capability, this could also be a revenge for that. You know, we don't really know, but obviously people don't want the Russians to keep lobbing missiles towards Kyiv. It's it's clearly, um, you know, disruptive. Ralph Sanchez and Evelyn Farkas, thank you both so very much. Appreciate it. Breaking as of like 10 minutes ago. IDF says 650 terror operatives captured at Shifa, including Hamas and Islamic Jihad commanders. The Islamic Jihad operatives holed up in the medical center surrendered to the troops. Among them were Hossam Salame, the commander of PIG's observation and intelligence unit in Gaza City, and his brother Wissam Salame, head of the terror group's propaganda unit in Gaza City, according to the IDF. Also captured at Shifa are three senior officers in Hamas's so called West Bank headquarters which is tasked with advancing attacks against Israel from the West Bank, the IDF said. Yeah. It's, uh... It's, it's, uh... Breaking news. And I will usually wait for a recording of the phone call by the IDF. Yeah, I'll wait for, I'll wait for additional confirmation. I have to send something to Will. I apologize. <sighs> IDF says is the easiest indicator that you are reading bullshit. I mean, I don't know. We'll see. This is a massive fucking claim. It's not like something that they can just make up. They have done it before. But we'll see. 
They are named by the Shimbet as Amr Asida, the head of the Nablus unit, Mohammed Kawa, uh, Kawazme, one of the planners of the 2014 kidnapping and murder attack of three Israeli teens. The detained terror operatives have taken to Israel for further interrogation by the Shimbet. According to the IDF, troops have so far killed more than 140 gunmen in the raid, which began nearly which began early Monday and is being carried out by the 401st Armored Brigade, Navy's Shahayatet 13 Commando Unit, other forces. During scans of the hospital, the IDF soldiers, uh, the IDF says soldiers seized weapons and intelligence documents, which contributed to the continuation of the fighting. The fighting at El Shifa is still ongoing and is expected to last several more days until all the terror operatives in the area are captured or killed, according to military officials. They executed 90 of them. Yeah. I, the thing I don't understand is I thought that Israel had already captured El Shifa. They see, they did a siege on El Shifa. They did a photo op on El Shifa, right? They literally went through the entire building. Remember the guns that they showed? They, I thought that they had, they had already basically fucking dug underneath El Shifa. What the fuck's going on? Euromed Monitor. International community must act immediately to stop Israeli army's massacre of Palestinians at the Al Shifa hospital. The ongoing Israeli massacre in Gaza City's Al Shifa medical complex and surrounding area has left at least 100 Palestinians dead, many of whom were victims of extrajudicial executions after their arrest. The international community must intervene immediately to put an end to this atrocity. New re newly released detainees and eyewitnesses told Euromed Human Rights Monitor that Israeli army forces have carried out unlawful killings and executions against displaced Palestinian civilians inside the Al Shifa medical complex, complex for three days in a row. And that the military operations there are ongoing. A survivor who asked to be identified only as MK confirmed that Israeli soldiers repeatedly took prisoners into the hospital's morgue area, that gunshots were then heard, and that soldiers left without the prisoners. The soldiers detained me and handcuffed me in the hospital courtyard. I was left undressed for more than nine hours, MK said. About four times during that period, I saw soldiers lead groups of detainees, always at least three people and never more than 10, into the hospital buildings, particularly the morgue building where bodies had previously been kept. Israeli occupation forces arrest of 94-year-old Palestinian elderly woman Na Naifa Rizk al Wantiti at al Wahta intersection west of Al-Shifa Hospital. It's the fourth time the IDF has raided Al-Shifa. I mean, yeah, this is literally, this is, Joining me now. this is why I'm confused. I thought they fucking went in and out. They dug into Al-Shifa and they... Failed to demonstrate that there was a Hamas command and uh, control operation center there. They had fucking journalists. Like, they, they went in and out of it. Like, what the fuck is going on? About four times during that period, I saw soldiers lead groups of detainees, always at least three people and never more than ten, into the hospital buildings, particularly the morgue building where bodies had previously been kept. Gunshots were heard with the soldiers then leaving the area to bring another group there. No, this is the same hospital. Al Shifa is one of the major hospitals. Another witness who preferred to remain completely anonymous due to the safety concerns and who was able to leave Al Shifa Medical Complex recently confirmed to the Euromed Monitor team that he witnessed Israeli forces taking eight to ten Palestinian civilians at a time towards the morgue area. He then heard heavy gunfire and the Israeli forces later left without the civilians. These civilians were likely subjected to unlawful killings and execution executions, as all the information obtained by Euromed Monitor's field team suggests that since Al Shifa Medical Complex was restored Sunday, Monday night. 100 Palestinians were killed by Israeli gunfire in and outside of it. They admitted to executing 140 Palestinians in Al Shifa, including children. That's why they're claiming they killed 150 terrorists there. In reality, they just murdered extrajudicially 150 people, some of them civilians, many of them most likely civilians. Judging by their civilian to actual enemy combatant uh, casualty numbers so far.
The Israeli army has acknowledged that it killed 90 people during the ongoing military operation in Al Shifa Medical Complex. Now, this came yesterday. That number has now reached 150. Um, an international committee must be established to investigate the war crimes and crimes against humanity committed by Israeli forces as a part of his genocide campaign, which includes planned killings and executions against civilians that are outside the purview of law and judiciary. Meanwhile, Israel's army is still arbitrarily detaining hundreds of civilians for the third day in a row, including medical personnel and immobile patients amid an environment of intimidation and heavy Israeli gunfire. About 320 people have already been detained, including journalists, medical personnel, and displaced people, many of whom have been tortured and forced to remain fully nude or dressed in flimsy white clothes. More than half of these individuals have been transported in trucks and military vehicles to Israeli detention facilities. The ongoing events at Al-Shifa Medical Complex and the risks faced by civilians there, including patients and healthcare workers and displaced people seeking refuge who are protected by international humanitarian law are deeply concerning. As hospitals and medical facilities are required to be protected, the international community must take on its responsibilities to protect all Gaza Strip residents and force Israel to end its genocide against Palestinians in the Strip. What is this? An Israeli helicopter is firing in the vicinity of Al-Shifa Medical Complex in Gaza, coinciding with multiple artillery explosions. Okay, that, that video doesn't show anything, though. It's just sounds, and I don't know how valid it is. I'm not calling into question the validity of it, but it's just, like, not enough for me to show. Regarding the IDF claim on Al-Shifa, this photo collage of the IDF shows some of the 358 confirmed terror operatives captured by troops at Gaza City's Shifa Hospital. In all, more than 650 suspects were detained. The Israeli, uh, the Israeli officials this morning said that they were trying to capture as many people as possible to uh, continue on with their investigations, to get more information from... Uh, to get more uh, information on, like, the ground operations of Hamas and Palestinian Islamic Jihad and, and many other things. Watch out, there's a video where uh, Israel killed four people with drones live on tape. is brutal. Um, right by the office of the director of the Shiva Hospital, a designated room for Hamas terrorists to operate from with weapons and terror funds intended for distribution. This is more evidence of Hamas's systematic abuse. Are you fucking kidding me? Really? March 18th is when they released this? Bro, you guys were inside of Al-Shifa for fucking four months. What the fuck? Or three months at this point. Damn, bro. Can't believe they found this, dude. Can't believe they found this right in the eve of, like, on March 18th. Right in the eve of their next fucking line of attack. Odds that they're trying to grab even more hostages. So in the event both sides swap hostages in a ceasefire, they may have even more than a requested amount. Yeah. They're like, look at this. We found Hamas terror tunnel uh, after, <laughs> after three months of taking over Al Shiva hospital. We found yet another terror plaque. We had not seen it for three months. We found it just now. As we are entering Al Shifa once again, we're in the office of the director of the Shifa Hospital. Come and see what we found. He says, This is the office of the director of the Shifa Hospital. Outside, you can see well known hospital compound, the Qatari building in front, and the emergency room here to the left. Adjacent to the office of the director, there are two rooms designed, designated for use by Hamas terrorists. Grenades, motor shells, bullets, and numerous terror funds were found. <laughs> Come on, man! Are you for fucking real? Listen, we found two bullets. And once again, here is a terror Quran. This one is annotated.
These are terror grenades and terror bullets and terror Quran. More video claimed to be from the hospital. The IDF says 300 terror suspects have been detained during the ongoing operation at Shiva Hospital. According to IDF, among the detainees are dozens of prominent terrorists in Hamas and Palestinian Islamic Jihad terror groups. The captured operatives are allegedly involved in directing terror attacks in the West Bank are members of the Hamas propaganda unit. And members of Islamic Jihad's rocket unit, the IDF says, suspects detained by the IDF as Shifa are questioned by field interrogators of the military Inde intelligence directorate's unit 504 before being taken to Israel for further investigation. The IDF also releases footage showing weapons found by troops in an office adjacent to the Shifa director's office. According to the IDF, dozens of gunmen have been killed in the raid so far. Blood. I think it is at this point well established that hospitals, of course, have guns inside of them, just like hospitals, of course, have uh, security officials. It is literally a fucking war zone. Duh. Okay. Hospitals have armed security in Gaza. This is not this should not come as a surprise to anyone. They need to have guns to protect the patients, not just from Israeli gunfire, which you can't really do too much of to begin with because, you know, what are you going to do? How are you going to fucking shoot back against a goddamn sniper drone that's just murking people that are showing up uh, in, on the windows indiscriminately, but against criminal elements as well? Because guess what? Hospitals have a lot of valuable things inside of it, especially in times of an ongoing ethnic cleansing campaign. So therefore, in order to ensure the safety and security of the patients, and also simultaneously uh, stop any kind of criminal elements from coming in to like uh, take up what remains of the the uh, like the the ascetic uh, amount of drugs that they already have uh, that are uh, you know that the patients need. You're going to need security. Considering that they killed one of the other civil security forces uh, leadership only a couple days prior in the Al Shifa hospital. Doesn't seem like they give a fuck about any of that stuff and are just basically using this to say, look, I told you there are fucking terrorists in here. Look at this. They have guns. Isn't the IOF calling members? Dude, every single thing I see how do you stay sane and articulate when watching this genocide footage while there are demons trying to justify it? Every single thing I see is, is insane. Like the fact that there are any, there are any fucking people inside of Gaza that have been able to fucking put up any kind of defense against the very well armed Israeli occupying force is wild. These are like bathtub rockets, literally, and bathtub bombs. Which, by the way, I don't know if they actually found in the hospital or simply found in the hospital, considering that they were in the hospital for fucking five months. What are we talking about? Yeah, here is the latest picture from the Al Shiva hospital from Hind Kudari. Uh, one of the last remaining alive journalists inside of Gaza. <sighs> now, remember, why is it in bags not displayed already? This reenactment is bad actors. Well, how they know it's not armed, like they manipulate them, like they know it's okay. Yeah, I mean, it is wild to raw dog a bag full of munitions like this. 
uh, without any suspicion that it might be like he's he's like just now I am finding weapons okay just now finding weapons in this bag and it's like you would never touch that bag okay you would never touch that bag you would literally have a, a, a an expert go through it because there is no there is no guarantee that that bag is not fucking booby trapped into oblivion As a matter of fact, in most circumstances, like, you can't show the end of the stream even though it's blurred, but they claim this is a video of a shootout with militants at the hospital. Like, in every single circumstance, all the weapons left behind would usually be booby-trapped. The IDF releases footage showing troops uh, of the Navy Shayetet 13 Commando Unit battling Hamas operatives inside of Gaza City Shiva Hospital. According to the IDF, some 20 gunmen were killed by troops in the area of the hospital. <laughs> what is this? Let me see. It, it might be... Uh... <laughs> what? Oh, uh, yes, the RPG storage hallway. Yeah. Um, there was a shootout at the hospital. The resistance shared on their telegram, too. How are you supposed to prove to people who are intent on their belief that all Palestinians are terrorists, that there being so much uh, Israel propaganda? What? I... There is just a high chance that they might have forgotten their own fucking booby traps in there. They're so incompetent. Wait, what? No. They released footage. What the heck? They, the IDF released footage of them engaging in what they say is a gun battle. The only thing you end up seeing is them uh, shooting at a blurred thing, a blurred person. I think there's a person there that they're shooting at, but I can't tell if he has a gun or not. And then like them checking corners and throwing grenades and stuff. No one else. And then at the end of it, there's a dead dude, um, also blurred with a Kalashnikov on the ground okay there is a dead dude with a kalashnikov on the ground it could absolutely no don't say plant a gun okay before you say that there is a much more realistic scenario where the actual palestinian security like hospital security might have engaged the israeli uh might have engaged the israeli commandos that were breaching the fucking hospital there are rules of engagement when you are dealing with a hospital, Israel is violating said rules every fucking day. You are not supposed to be seizing or sieging a hospital like this. Okay? Israel is doing the criminal thing here. Totally reasonable for the Palestinian security to engage with the idea of at that point. Yes. Just like the head of police that they uh, murked. The elite unit of the Palestinian Islamic Jihad send their greetings to the Axis resistance from below the earth in the tunnels of Gaza, specifically northern Gaza, where Israel clean, claims it cleared out and has full control over. Is there a TOS in this? This is from the 21st of March, 2024. Jesus Christ. Al Mukawama Al Islamia uh, released footage here saying that they're still operating inside of northern Gaza as Israel claims that you they've taken. Says today as Ramadan dawns upon I us know, in the bottle, battle battle of the Aqsa flood. From here, from the bottom of the earth, from the fighting tunnels of the Palestinian Islamic Jihad of the Northern Regiment Elite Unit. We extend our greetings to the Axis of Resistance, Hezbollah, Ansarallah, Iraq, Iran, Yemen, our people in Lebanon, and the Jenin Brigade, and the battalions of the Fearless, and every year, may you be well.
Yes, this is not Hamas. This is Islamic Jihad. This is their... Uh, is it... This is their special for their commando unit. That's crazy. <sighs> this one is recent too. Hamas video shows intense fighting in Gaza with Israel's military. As far as I understand, Hamas and Islamic Jihad are fighting in the vicinity of the uh of the Al Shifa hospital. This is from a month ago, but not inside of the Al Shifa hospital. This is an old video. Did you see that they literally have a podcast now? Yeah, I heard. I haven't, I haven't watched it, but I have heard that they have a podcast apparently. On a separate note, the IDF released this pretty incredible footage the other day. Watch the first 20 seconds a gunman hides from a drone. The IDF released this footage captured by a drone showing a Hamas gunman waiting to ambush troops inside a building in the Hamad town residential complex in Han Yunus. The gunman, after being spotted, was killed by troops of the elite at Gaul's command. Wait, did they show the dead body here? This one is from the vicinity of El Shifa. I can't tell if there are, um... Uh, I, they're just blowing up tanks. Yes, the footage is extremely graphic. They get blown to pieces. Okay, I don't want to show this footage if it's extremely graphic. Anyway. Not sure if safe or stream, but this is the video of the 14th targeted by a drone. Al Jazeera clipped the video to not show body parts and dead bodies. Yeah. Um, there's new videos like that every day. It's wild. Just saw it as depraved. Man was literally caught crawling after watching three people with his he was with die and they blew him apart. Oh, you're talking. To, okay. Because there is so many fucking uh, uh, footage. There's so much footage from inside of Gaza. I think people are getting confused, okay? You're getting confused, and you're also kind of confusing me as well uh, with respect to what footage you're referencing. Hold on one second. Oh. What? Breaking, Israeli airstrikes target the gates of Al Amal Orphanage Institute on Wahda Street in Gaza City. Jesus. They are talking about the Al Jazeera footage from the fallen Israeli drone. Yeah. Al Jazeera got the footage from an Israeli drone Hamas took down, by the way. It would have been lost forever if Hamas didn't get it. Let me see. Let me watch this footage to see if it's like okay for stream. There's just four civilians walking.
I'll show you this part at least. This is drone footage that uh, Al Jazeera showed from a downed Israeli drone. It's basically just four. It's the footage of the four guys walking. It absolutely is not safe. Okay, I'm not going to show you the rest of it. But it's just four four dudes walking. No guns, nothing. Okay, they're just walking. And you can clearly see. Holy fuck. Oh my god. There's a fifth guy walking ahead. And he starts running. Or I think he's like still walking in a straight line. What the fuck? I don't want to show. It's blurry. They blur all the fucking dead bits and pieces. The same four guys, two survives and they follow up. Oh, it's the same four guys. They blow up the four dudes walking. One of them is like on the ground crawling. The other one starts like picking up his pace while limping. They blow him up. They track him and they blow him up. There's another guy that falls to the ground and he's crawling and they blow him up as well. That's crazy, dude. Yeah, and then they zoom in on they zoom in on the uh they zoom in on like the dead bot the drone is like zooming in on the dead bodies. It is so fucking insane. Um holy shit. You got Nick, thank you for the raid. Hope you had a good stream. I forgot. We're we're talking about some really fucked up, really gruesome shit that Israel's doing right now in Gaza. Um This is uh, Don Lemon is not coming on today. We could not. We could not set up an interview in in short notice, even though they were the ones who asked. Anyway, um, dude, this is really fucked up. Okay. All right. I'm not going to show you the drone. I'm not going to show you the drone footage. Of the Israeli drones lighting up four Palestinian civilians walking home and then double tapping the ones that survived the first drone strike. Yeah. Also, as many warned, this war will cause more radicalization if true. Border police officers detain a Palestinian man in the West Bank who allegedly planned to carry out a suicide bombing. Law enforcement officials say undercover officers raided the Akbat Jabr refugee camp near Jericho following intelligence provided by the Shimbe security agency on a suspect who was planning to commit a suicide bombing in the immediate time frame. 
The suspect was captured following a brief chase, which also included a gun battle with other Palestinians in the area. Police say the officers returned fire at three suspects hurling explosive devices and shooting at the cops. One of them was killed, according to Palestinian health officials. The detained suspect was handed over to Shimbet for questioning. But why using bomb on four civilians seems to have been unnecessary, even by IDF standards? The fuck do you mean? What do you think they've done? How do you think they killed 30,000 plus Palestinians so far? It is exactly that. This is the IDF standard. We just happened to catch a down drone directly show their targeting strategies. It is the IDF standard. There's nothing, there, there is nothing else. There is no other IDF standard. That is the only standard that they have. Arrest everyone. Arrest everyone. And then at the end of it, fucking the Israeli military published a drone video of the strike on their two people. Uh, one of which was carrying an RPG. After we asked them, the IDF admitted it was actually a bicycle. Oh, this is... Oh, here's the... Oh, my God. Oh, my God. He's not dead yet. This is... Uh, this literally... They claimed this drone footage that they fucking murked these two dudes with. They claimed was a RPG. It was just a fucking bicycle, dude. This is from March 12th. I didn't even catch this one. Yeah, obviously, uh, the IDF would never target individuals with such disregard for their safety and security. That's crazy. Civilians, they would never do that. People only care about the Palestinians when they get radicalized and become Hamas members, not when their lives and families get blown up. Yeah, absolutely. It's completely fucking unacceptable. This is actual indiscriminate uh, bombing? No, it's, it's what I call discriminately indiscriminate. Okay? It is... It comes across as discriminate, I mean, indiscriminate, but it's actually very deliberate, very targeted murder of civilians. Dude, this is uh, this is mechanized death. I I don't know. There there's no other way to put what's going on, other than mechanized death. Like the Israeli occupying force has created a machine of death that it is unleashing on top of the entire population of Gaza, every single Palestinian, and even. Israeli hostages are not safe inside of Gaza due to Israel's own devices. They are openly doing it. There is no fucking camp because the camp is technically a ghetto that they are blowing up currently. And while they're doing that, they're also stating time and time again that uh, this is valid. Here's what the Israeli media is saying. This is the military correspondent for Khan News. In the photo published by the IDF spokesperson after Brigadier General Hagari's statement, a photo of 358 terrorists arrested at Shifa Hospital was published. One of them is a very senior in the military arm of Hamas, Ra'ad Saad, head of the operations division. His picture was also published on the cards of senior Hamas officials that were distributed to IDF fighters in Gaza. In a statement, Hagari said, We arrested senior terrorists in Shifa whose names cannot be published yet because they strengthen important intelligence information. Itai is an evil free, by the way. He should be at The Hague. I mean, he's his job is literally to fucking do active coverage of a genocide in the most, like, pro-Israel way he possibly can. I don't understand, okay? I don't... I mean, first of all, he is literally a stenographer. He is a... He is doing propaganda pro... While I agree with you, is there any proof that Israel is killing the hostages? Um, I mean, there is proof of Israel that has killed hostages in the past, but as, what, what do you mean? Like the Israeli hostages? I'm sorry. 
I don't know how to describe this to you. Israel admitted that they shot and killed some of the hostages. Like, openly. Because they did. Like, they straight up executed three Israeli hostages. Straight up. Who were waiting, waving flags. And not only that, but also every single hostage that has, like, not been heard of. Like, it... Hamas keeps releasing information about some of the hostages that Israel has killed through rockets. Israel then will sometimes recover their bodies and conduct an investigation. You never hear about the you never hear about the the outcome of said investigations because of course Israel fucking blew them up. How else would they have died? The only evidence we have from hostages that have actually been released in a ceasefire is that Hamas and Islamic Jihad do everything physically in their fucking power to protect the hostages from Israeli gunfire and Israeli rockets. This is also the firsthand testimony of the hostages that have been released. Obviously, this makes sense. Not because they have incredible care and incredible uh, interest in like the humanity of the Israeli uh, hostages that they took as hostage. It's because it is their only bargaining chip. Hostages are more valuable alive than dead. Almost every single hostage that has been released, with the exception, I guess, of like the most ridiculous propagandists, have said that their real fear when they were in captivity was not by their captors, but instead by Israel. There have been instances where um, some of the Israeli hostages have been released have openly fucking stated that Palestinian militants have covered their bodies, the Israeli hostages and their bodies, okay, with their own bodies, with like uh, under, uh, under uh, uh, bedding. Like they've, they've thrown stuff on top of them when bombings are happening and also stood on top of those beds uh, on top of the mattresses in an effort to protect them with their own bodies, providing like a real fucking human shield. Uh. Hamas has released uh, a security official from Hamas told Al Jazeera, a number of pictures on the list belong to people currently outside Gaza or other pictures of martyrs. If you want to... In relation to this, the IDF admitted a hostage was wounded in an airstrike. It was so close. Oh, here's more information on that. IDF spokesman Rear Admiral Daniel Hagari says, Corporal Noah Marciano, who was held hostage in a hideout apartment near Shifa Hospital, was killed by Hamas and not an Israeli airstrike. Citing a pathology report and intelligence information, he says Marciano was wounded by an IDF airstrike, then later taken to Shifa, where she was murdered. Noah was kidnapped to an apartment next to Shifa Hospital. During the IDF strikes in Gaza, a Hamas terrorist who was holding her was killed. The pathology report states that Noah was injured by the strike, but not in a life-threatening way. And this is contrary to the lies published by Hamas, to which Noah was killed by IDF strikes. I do not fucking believe, even for a single moment, that that hostage was killed by Hamas. Okay? I don't. I don't believe that at all. That is so insane. Because, guess what? One, this goes against all of the fucking first-hand testimony from the hostages. Two, it goes against rationale and logic. And three, and I told you this on October 9th, okay? On October 9th, I said, if Hamas executes hostages, you will know. Because they will do it on camera. Hostages are more valuable alive than dead, okay? So if Hamas wants to increase pressure on uh, Israel, for example, they would, they would film, they would film the execution to be like, this is what you brought upon yourself. They would not just kill a hostage without making a fucking demand 
and, and getting something out of it. Okay? That's it. I'm surprised they haven't yet. Because Of course they haven't, because they're more valuable alive than dead. That's the whole point. The hostages are their only fucking lifeline. Not that it cares. I mean, not that Israel cares, and not that it matters, because Israel keeps blowing them up. So they would pull an ISIS moment? Yes. They haven't. As far as I know, Hamas has never done something like that. Okay? And it's not just ISIS that does this, okay? But as far as I, I, I've never seen them do something like that. But yes, in a hostage situation, that is something that they would do if they were to increase pressure on Israel to act. That is what they would do. They would never just fucking kill a hostage for funsies. You are delusional if you think this. Why the fuck would they go through all of the work to even secure hostages if you're just fucking going to kill them? And not get anything, not extract anything in, uh, in that regard. The Indian explosives in Gaza IDF used munitions from 1953 and shells intended for training only. Attempts to preserve munitions, irregular shipments, and Indian explosives in disintegrating sacks created a logistical and operational nightmare that made it difficult for artillery to assist combat forces and increased risk of errors and misfire. You know. It's because they've used so much. The theory supports this. Most literature suggests that terrorists act as rational agents, i.e. terrorism is a means of extracting concessions, and so killing a hostage would be, like you're saying, illogical. Yes, you only believe that if you personally, legitimately believe that uh, Hamas and other Palestinian militancy are not actually operating with any kind of like logic. You might not agree with their means. You might not agree with their demands, but there is still some human rationale behind it. And, and the reality is like, just like nine 11, right? I don't agree with uh, what Osama bin Laden did, but of course there is a reason for why he did it. It's not correct, right? His actions are not correct. His reasoning is not correct. But it doesn't matter. There's still a fucking logical through line there. If you look at it and you just go, oh, that's just a fucking barbarian who wants to kill as many people as possible, you're missing the fucking point. You cannot solve problems with this kind of thinking. Okay? It's something that I have had to repeat over and over and over and over again since October 7th. If you, like, people legitimately do think, people legitimately do think that these guys are impossible to reason with, they are not operating with any kind of, like, self-preservation in mind, that they're simply just, like, Islamist fundamentalists who are crazy and just want to do, like, bloodlust and rapes, like, mass rapes. Okay? What is this? Yeah, there is no, like, they want to do fucking mass rapes. That's why they fucking stole hostages me uh, method there. That is just a lie that Israel repeats over and over and over again in order to justify, dehumanize the Palestinian population. And then, uh, and then you know, tell the rest of the world what they're doing is good. They've used so many fucking artillery. There's, they've used so much artillery that even in spite of the fact that America, despite the fact that America is, like, consistently giving them more and more to fucking use on Palestinian children, they still don't have enough, by the way. Think about how fucking insane that is. Oh. Evan Hill, on January 7th, the Israeli military struck a car identifying, uh, carrying four journalists, calling them terrorists who operated an aircraft that posed a threat to IDF troops. A new post-investigation finds no evidence of uh, any Israeli forces in the vicinity. In a statement on January 10th, the IDF said commercially available Mavic 2 drone operated by well-known freelancer Mustafa Thuraya. This is Motaz's uh, freelancer uh, drone uh, operator, right?
The Pose obtained and reviewed satellite imagery and shared that imagery with outside researchers. No Israeli forces were visible or detected within more than a mile of where Thuraya launched his drone. In a statement on January 10th, the IDF said commercially available Mavic 2 drone operated by well-known freelancer Mustafa Thuraya posted it posed an immediate threat to nearby soldiers. The Post reviewed Thuraya's drone footage and saw no Israeli forces. The IDF said that it had evidence that both men killed in the strike, Thuraya and Hamza, belonged to militant groups. Interviews with 14 witnesses and colleagues gave no indication that either man was operating as anything other than journalists that day. Both men had been subject to Israeli security checks, having traveled through IDF checkpoints earlier in the war, and Datu had been cleared by Israel to leave Gaza. I'm sure the nuance understanders and and uh, the people that deserve that, that constantly look for nuance and nuance and nuance will uh, go back with their egg on their faces and go, "Man, that's crazy! Can't believe Israel's doing this." This is one example in a sea of tens of thousands, by the way. Allowed to leave Gaza in the past, most likely. And uh, I think, like, what they're trying to, what Evan is saying here is that it is proof that these people are not fucking militants if Israel is allowing them to leave uh, Gaza. They had to do it. Israel has been mass assassinating journalists and offering false evidence for why they had to do this since October 8th. Israeli misinfo ops are wild, especially because of how amateurish and bad they are. You'd think they'd be better at doing this kind of stuff. No, because they're they they're bad at doing this kind of stuff because they don't have to be good at doing this kind of stuff. Because everyone just eats it up anyway. Everyone eats it up. In the Western world, people don't fucking look any deeper. They are desperate. Especially our media is desperate to be like, Israel is actually in the right on this one. Come on, please, please, please. I know they've like done this over and over and over again, but this time they're in the right. And please don't say that they're not in the right because then I can say you're anti-Semitic. Okay. Here. Does this Channel 4 news footage, the Channel 4 blurs their stuff, Gaza right? City, the Al-Shifa hospital and the streets around it are yet again in the eye of this war storm. They blur, Hamas they blur the, this uh, Channel 4 does blur their uh, combat footage. This footage fighting in the neighborhood around the hospital. It's difficult to get an accurate take on exactly what happened there over the last 24 hours, but it is violent and it is bloody. Here's what we know so far. Al Jazeera broadcast this footage, thought to be filmed yesterday. In it, you can see one of the main hospital buildings. And interspersed with gunfire, you can hear what's thought to be an announcement by the IDF. Over loudspeakers, the people inside the hospital are addressed as follows. If you leave the building, the soldiers will shoot at you. The speaker then goes on, don't mess with us. Once we get the hostages, will allow you to leave. Al Jazeera were also given this footage. It shows large numbers of women and children inside the hospital, slowly moving down the stairs to shelter on the floors below. The IDF released this footage and said that they'd conducted a major operation centered around the hospital. According to them, Hamas and Islamic Jihad militants had reoccupied a section of the complex. Until now, we have arrested over 250 Hamas and Islamic Jihad terrorists that we identified. The IDF said that they'd killed 50 Hamas gunmen in the last 24 hours, taking the number of fighters killed around the hospital this week to 140, along with two Israeli soldiers who died. That was according to the IDF, though. People fleeing the hospital today had a different interpretation of what happened there. Um Hadid Awad was sheltering in the hospital with her triplets. They besieged us. We were there for three days without water, without food, without drinks. 
We have triplets. We couldn't find them any water to drink or milk. Umisar Mal Sakini says the shooting inside the hospital was at times indiscriminate, something the IDF denied. They took over department by department. They started with the emergency department. They told the men to come down. Some men didn't come down. When the men didn't come down, they executed them. On Monday this week, we brought you the story of brother and sister Rafiq and Rafif Dugmash. Both had limbs amputated after an Israeli airstrike and were being treated in Al Shifa Hospital. The British charity Medical Aid for Palestinians is trying to evacuate the siblings. So the last we heard is that Rafif and Rafiq are still in Shifa Hospital. Um, their uncle was last able to speak to them this morning, but now all communications have been lost. They said that they had no food, they said that they had no water, and no one is able to contact them anymore. So we are seriously concerned about, about them and about all of the other patients who remain in Shifa Hospital. They are now by themselves, they're kids who are alone. What's happened at Al Shifa is embarrassing for the IDF. Remember, we've been here before. The hospital was the focal point of a military operation back in the autumn and at the time the IDF showed off what they said was Hamas tunnels and weaponry. The fact that they've lost control of such a high profile site will raise questions about the extent to which they can meaningfully secure anywhere in Gaza City. And earlier I spoke to Alicia Cairns, who is chair of the Foreign Affairs Select Committee. She recently had a Twitter exchange with an Israeli government spokesperson who had claimed the UN rather than Israel was responsible for blocking aid deliveries into Gaza. She wrote to the Foreign Secretary, Lord Cameron, to see what the view of the UK government was. So I began by asking her about the response that she received. So Lord Cameron's been very clear that the reason why sufficient aid is not getting into Gaza is due to the arbitrary and changing restrictions that the Israeli government is putting on them. Uh, one of the claims that had also been made was that the UN had requested for no aid delivery to be made on Saturdays. I knew that not to be the case, having met with the UN myself, and he has now confirmed in writing that actually it was the Israeli government made that request because it's Shabbat. So therefore it was important that he countered some of the claims that were being made that were misleading about why aid wasn't getting into Gaza. You use the word arbitrary and David Cameron said the main blockers in terms of aid remain arbitrary denials by the government of Israel. That's a pretty extraordinary claim, isn't it? I mean, that would mean a breach of international law, wouldn't it? So this has been one of the issues I've been raising for many months, that I think Israel is not showing the commitment to international law uh, and humanitarian law they should be when it comes to aid deliveries. I saw on the border when I went to Al-Arish, for example, children's neonatal resuscitation kits that have been rejected. I mean, dude, there's a, they don't, they're not, they're not beholden to humanitarian law. They just don't give a shit. They are not interested in humanitarian law when they're doing their offensive actions. And, of course, they're not uh, interested in doing humanitarian law when it comes to delivering aid, rendering aid. You know, they just don't give a shit. They don't care. I don't know how else to describe it other than they very obviously demonstrably don't care. They haven't actually fucking cared since October 7. They haven't cared before October 7 either. The Instagram account of Samuel, who confessed to being a soldier and admitted to torturing Palestinians when they catch them and shared the video of an internal group has filed a lawsuit against me and several others. One, I have this, his conversation saved with his confessions. Two, didn't he say he was glad? Three, I didn't know a thing about who he is and where he lives before the video came out. He used his personal account and told me we are the soldiers and that he is very glad the videos came out. Four, I sent all the details of the relevant people who reached me out. I didn't, five, I didn't share any of his personal details. I know his name from the Instagram and... And he by himself said which city he is from. Six, I condemn all attacks on his family if happened and any others non-involved. A French serving in the Israeli military displacing Palestinians kidnapped from Gaza. This was on March 18th. 
Elle est descendue, fils de pute. Sur les pierres. Ah, enculé de ta mère. Vous avez vu ces petits fils de putain là Regardez, c'est pissé dessus. Regarde, je vais te montrer son dos, tu vas rigoler. Regarde. Ils l'ont torturé. On va le faire parler. Vous avez vu son dos Ah, fils de putain. Quand même, son nom est fils de putain. Putain. Les autres béchets qui sont. Bande d'enculés. Fermez vos gueules. Bande de salopes. Hein vous, jouez, vous étiez content de 7 octobre, hein Bande de fils de pute. Sons of bitches pissed themselves. We're gonna torture them. We're gonna make them talk. Like, they're posting this shit on their own. Bro. They are posting their shit on their own Telegram channels. They're posting this shit on Instagram. They're posting this shit on TikTok. And then you fucking turn around. And then you turn around and get mad. Well, I guess he doesn't get mad because he he then actually, when Yunus uh, posted this, he turned around and said, I'm very happy that these videos came out. So now you know all over the world that we catch terrorists, we torture them. We have identified the man who shared this video. His name is Samuel Onona. He admitted to me that he's a soldier and he tortures uh, and kidnaps. When I said it causes problems with the soldiers, he replied, we are the soldiers. Samuel published the videos on an internal Insta group called We Are Tearing Apart Palestinians with a group picture of a dead Palestinian. These are the individuals who speak both Hebrew and French. I told him that they may sue him in France as they know that he shared the video showing Israeli soldiers torturing Palestinians. He replied, let them do. I'm in Lyon, France. Come. Who's going to sue me? I'm waiting for you. In a Telegram group, a user named Yael with a profile picture of a soldier asserts that he is a soldier in the video who shared with these guys and claims that it is his sound in the background of the torture video. In the comments, he says that the video was recorded in January. We now have confirmation from the man himself admitting he's a soldier and shared the video. Furthermore, we know now that there's another soldier who comes to be the soldier president of the video and says that it is his voice. Yoel, who says above that he is the one speaking, is from the same family and, uh, and city as Samuel, both from Onona and from Leon. That's why he says nephew in the video. Samuel is sharing the video he got from his likely nephew, Israeli soldier Yoel Onona of the Paratroopers Brigade. Now he's mad and wants to sue him. After saying this in his fucking DMs. Who do you think you're scaring? And who do you think put the pressure on with your tweets? I'm very happy these videos came out. So now you know all over the world that we, when we catch terrorists, we torture them. The thing is, bro, I don't think these guys understand, like, this is some criminal liability shit. Like, I think people are very comfortable. I think people are very comfortable and very arrogant about this kind of thing. Like, all it takes is one fucking, one switch to flip in the minds of, of some more moderate or more moral people in government for this to turn into a South Africa style situation. And what I mean by that is South Africa has openly stated that any South African national that is a dual citizenship with Israel that went to fight with the IDF, if they ever return to South Africa will be criminally prosecuted. And I think that's correct, by the way, I think that that is what should happen. I think that that's what should happen in the entire Western world. Straight up. Let's see if they followed rules of engagement. These guys are so arrogant that they think they can just like post snuff films without any repercussions whatsoever.
For those of you who said they won't do that, here's France's spokesman confirming that the French justice system is free to prosecute French nationals who went to fight for the IDF in Gaza if they were involved in war crimes. Reminder that France is the second largest origin country for foreign IDF soldiers after the U.S. Bro, I don't think you guys understand it. Like, I know we, we dunk on the French all the time, okay? We dunk on the French all the time. Fine. Fair. Okay, we dunk on the British all the time. I would say the only country that is, the country that's least likely to prosecute their fucking war criminals for going and serving and doing war crimes in the IDF is England. Is America and then England, sorry. I think Germany has a higher likelihood of prosecuting war criminals than England or the, the United States does. I mean, it's, it's low, like third, third least likely country, though. France is too Islamophobic to prosecute them. They'll throw them a prey when they chase hijabi women during Ramadan. naive question but why england um england is like i mean england is responsible for israel existing as a settler colonial project to begin with and that energy has never changed england is fucking insane dude with israel i don't know why they get away with so much like they kind of get lost in the conversation because they're basically seen as like mini america and obviously no one comes near America on, like, dick-riding Israel. But yeah, England's pretty fucking bad when it comes to defending Israel and dick-riding Israel. Seriously, doubt the Germans or the French will do anything on the West has no moral compass. Why do you expect they will do anything? Are you being naive or hopeful? I'm being hopeful. I'm being hopeful. That's why I said there are always like some moderates or some moral people in positions of power that will push to do the right thing. And I think a lot of people forget that we're looking at we are looking at um, like Macron and other fucking freaks forgetting that like all it takes is for some judge to be like, no, fuck that. I do have the smoke, actually. Does that make sense? Sometimes that's all it takes. New Pew Research poll on the Israel Hamas war. Very few Americans, 5% say that the way Hamas carried out his October 7 attack against Israel was acceptable. But a somewhat larger share view Hamas's reasons for fighting Israel as valid, 22%. Responding to a parallel set of questions about Israel, most Americans, 58%, describe Israel's reasons for fighting Hamas as valid. But the U.S. publicly is more divided over Israel's conduct of the war. On balance, 38% say it's acceptable, while 34% say it's unacceptable. These figures include nearly identical shares of Americans who say the way that Israel is responding to Hamas is completely acceptable and completely unacceptable. That's crazy. They're like October 7, unacceptable. Everything after, kind of acceptable, totally acceptable, very acceptable. Oh, God, Americans are so fucking disgusting. A majority of U.S. adults, 57%, say they sympathize, at least to some extent, with both Israelis and Palestinians. In general, Americans express more positive views of the Israeli people than of the Israeli government. Similarly, more Americans express favorable attitudes towards the Palestinian people than toward either the Palestinian Authority or Hamas. Views of the war and its key players vary greatly by age. This is a genocide, and Americans are, like, finally arriving at the both sides are to blame position. Think about how fucking insane that is. God damn it, the Western world, especially the United States of America, is such a morally bankrupt, disgusting, imperialist uh, monstrous nation. Holy shit.
It took like active genocide for six months for Americans to be like, you know what? Maybe both sides are kind of doing their own thing. Like literally ask them the same question. I'm sure they did about Russia and Ukraine and see how different the American attitude is. Two thousand five hundred Jews were killed and two hundred and fifty hostages. What? Two thousand five hundred Jews were killed. What number are you working with? If you feel if you feel the need to double the amount of uh, Israelis that were killed, maybe you should do a little bit of a fucking uh, you know reexamination of why you feel the need to double it up. They weren't all Jews. They were all Israeli, or many of them were Israeli, or in Israel proper. There were literally fucking, uh, uh, like, Palestinian citizens of Israel that were also killed in the attacks. I don't personally believe that it was a good thing, okay? Just to clarify, if anyone has uh, some kind of confusion, okay? But, like, come on now. Are you talking about the partition of 1947 and what war crimes are you talking about? The apartheid is a criminal existence, is a criminal enterprise. Israel is an apartheid regime. Israel was an apartheid regime on October 6. Israel was an apartheid regime on October 7. Israel was an apartheid regime in its inception to the Palestinian citizens of Israel. And then after 1967 to all of the Palestinians in occupied Palestinian territory. It has been one for 75 years. October 7 did not happen out of nowhere. It happened as a consequence of Israel consistently killing Palestinians. October, on, according to Euromed Health Report, I believe it was Euromed that covered this. On October 6, there was a report that came out that dictated, okay, that, that, the, the year 2023 was the deadliest year for Palestinian children. Why was it deadly for Palestinian children? Not as a, a consequence of uh, natural disasters or something like that. It was the deadliest year for Palestinian children for, because Israel was killing them. What's wack about these people is they, they start off saying this misinformation that if you barely press them, they instantly get Islamophobic. Yes. And in many instances, Islamophobia plays a major role in the way that people make up their minds about this kind of thing because it's confusing to them. Islamophobia is a very powerful way to justify the war on terror, which was an abject disaster, right? That has obvious cultural remnants. It's a very powerful method of social conditioning. They do it to me when I say I'm Palestinian and Christian. They instantly dip. They don't know how to respond. Yeah, they, they don't understand like that Palestinians are Christian as well. The OG Christians. You know? Some 5% of Americans say the way Hamas carried out its attack on Israel on October 7th was completely or somewhat acceptable. Nearly three quarters say it was unacceptable, including 66% who consider it to be completely unacceptable. One in five are unsure whether Hamas's actions were acceptable. Relatively few Americans across demographic and religious groups analyzed in this report consider the way Hamas carried out. This is the terrorism designation, by the way. Obviously, what October, October 7th is unacceptable, okay? There were war crimes. It was an act of terror, certainly. That much is correct, but there is no same, not even like remotely same level of interest in criticizing the Israeli action in the same fucking group that they're, that they're talking to. Like 5% of Americans say the way Hamas carried out its attacks on Israel were somewhat acceptable or completely or somewhat acceptable, but everything since. They are, they are no Jews in Yemen or Syria. What are you saying? They, no, they shoot rockets. 
What you are thinking is that Israel should not exist then? Who is native to that land? What are you doing? Bro, this is the Hasbara bot. I swear to God, it broke. You're complete. You're bringing up entirely, utterly irrelevant talking points. And also, Israelis now that live there, Jews that live there, are not native to that land, okay? You're fucking delusional. You know who's a native to that land? The Palestinian citizens of Israel that comprise 2.5% uh, of the population. Or not 25 sorry, 25% of the population inside of Israel. Not irrelevant at all since we are making the argument. No, no one is making the argument. You're making the argument because you're a fucking dumbass. Israel, ironically, when they kill Palestinians, are literally killing the direct descendants of themselves that were Jewish at some point. You're not making an argument. You're just repeating a historical propaganda. Next, you're going to fucking tell me that Moses actually part of the Red Sea. That was real on God. Like, I read it in a book. It's so funny. Everything falls apart. No, they shoot rockets. Of course they shoot rac rockets. What are they supposed to do? Give them fucking precision guided munitions then. I'm in favor of giving Palestinians... I'm in favor of giving Palestinians their own Iron Dome and also precision guided munitions so they don't have to fucking drop bathtub made rockets into fucking random places in Israel to get intercepted anyway. So they can actually target the military facilities. How about that? Do you like that? Do you agree with that? Everybody always wants to talk about moral equivalency between a fucking militant resistance group against an apartheid regime and the apartheid regime with a fucking nuke crazy and even on that same moral playing field israel still is the greater evil hamas is the lesser evil that is 100 percent true straight up i will stand on that statement time and time again looking at the casualty reports looking at the actual death and destruction that Israel has brought about the entirety of the Palestinian population versus what Hamas did and what the Palestinian militancy did on October 7, their targeting was significantly higher as far as percentages goes with military personnel, direct military personnel versus civilians. Did they target civilians? Absolutely. Okay. absolutely. fucking -lutely they did. Is that an act of terror? Absolutely. Israel has done that 1,000-fold since October 7. Israel was already unjustifiably occupying space that does not belong to them, killing Palestinians regularly, detaining them, uh, and, and trying them sometimes if they're lucky under military court. Totally fucking ridiculous. Totally, just utterly immoral, objectionable behavior, complete war crimes galore before October 7. But even after October 7, if you match the actions on October 7 against, you want to talk about natives so Moses never existed and that temple is fake too? Wait, what? Okay, so then that temple is out there for nowhere? Wait, do you unironically think Moses actually part of the Red Sea, you dumb fuck? Are you serious? I can't, dude. I mean, I... Uh, okay. There is something genuinely wrong with people. What is happening? Why do people... Dude, what the fuck's going on? D by the way, 0% chance this person is Jewish. Okay? 0% chance. I have never encountered a single Jewish person that unironically says, like, Moses part of the Red Sea. Like, that was a real thing that happened in history. Never in my entire life. Most Jews I know are are... You know, they're reform Jews. 
I have literally never met a single fucking person that is actually Jewish that believes that that was a historic event. This is some evangelical nonsense. Okay? It's only the Brianna Woos who want to defend Israel that say nonsensical psychopathic shit like this. No, I don't even think Ben Shapiro believes it, dude. Get the fuck out of here. You're right, we don't fuck these non-American... What? No, this is not like a... This is not a Jewish person. This is an evangelical, probably. There is no... Like, I've literally never met... Why is it that psychopathic as Muslims, we believe that? It is fucking insane. No matter who claims to believe that Moses is actually part of the Red Sea, okay? I will bet you that he's an Israeli. I don't think Israelis believe that either. There is no magic that happened. I don't believe that fucking Jesus also walked on water either. Okay? So stupid. You said that about Moses? I never said that? No, I was talking about fucking Brianna Wu and the arguments that Brianna Wu was making that you did not address and immediately moved on to the temple or whatever. No one... No one has said that Jews didn't live there, dumb fuck. Of course they did. What the fuck are you talking about? 3,000 years ago, but they did. You know, you know what happened to some of the Jews that didn't leave? They converted. And now their, their descendants are getting slaughtered by Jews that left the area, went to Europe, withstood pogroms, had a fucking long history of getting... Uh, getting absolutely obliterated by psychopathic bloodthirsty christians in both pogroms and also the holocaust obviously the the greatest of all the greatest pogrom of all okay and now they're back to and, and killing their own fucking ancestors what an idiotic argument there's no world in which this makes sense. You can't fucking pull from 3,000 years in the past and be like, well, no, we deserve to fucking kill all the people that live there now. That's so stupid, okay? Or they're killing their descendants, yeah. So no talking about natives? No, you dumb fuck. I'm saying that you're killing the fucking natives. You're stupid. You're killing the native population that li literally didn't leave because if you are a firm believer, a committed believer in Zionism, you are a Judeo supremacist. So you think that those people that converted from Judaism to Islam or Judaism to Christianity are no longer real Jews or were Jews at any point in their fucking descendancy, any point in their ancestry. So you don't think that they are supreme beings. This is how Israel operates. Not that it fucking matters, because ultimately, I don't believe that indigenous populations in the United States of America could get a fucking nuke and wipe out the entirety of the fucking continent because they lived here. No one would make this argument. The natives never make this argument. Land back does not mean we kill all the fucking people here. This is also a consistent position that I maintain, which is why I'm a believer in a single state solution, because I don't think that it would be valid. It would still be legal, but I don't think it would be moral to displace 750,000 people. So sucks to suck. Everyone's got to live with one another. I'm talking, of course, of the population of the West Bank, even though every single one of those 750,000 are technically terrorists. Settler terrorists engaging in an act of settler terrorism. Stop saying who started the war. Lamont, calm down, bud. You just, what? 
You just admitted Jewish people originated in Israel, but there aren't indigenous. Hypocrisy at its finest. Wait, no fucking way. This is an ad break debate from a 31 month subscriber. Shut the fuck up. Don't do that. Stop doing that. Stop doing that. Stop doing that. Stop. Oh, that's a bad bait. That's not a good bait. Hold on. I'm also like wrestling with my chicken over here trying to weigh it. Okay. 13.7, 13.8. Oh, Hasbro trolls never send their best because they ain't got their best. Who state? Everyone, everyone that lives there, every single person, every single person that lives on that soil. That's who, you know, like a fucking normal country would operate and not some like psychopathic Nazi state that we're talking of. <laughs> My man went, who's state? And no, before you ask, I do not give a shit about Israel's demographic concerns of maintaining a Jewish majority. Because guess what? I'm not a fucking freak. <laughs> it is insane. I literally make this argument against Republicans on a daily fucking basis in America who go and say, oh, they have different values than us. We have to make sure we have to make sure that we shut off immigration from like non-white nations. It's like, that's so stupid, dude. You're just a fucking racist asshole. Anyway, here's the three minute ad break now. Every argument with an Israel defender devolves into, well, what are you going to do about my fucking out of control racism? <laughs> Excuse me. I am the most racist person you've ever fucking met. Now you have to deal with my insane racism. And I think like, so you're saying that it's racist to have a Jewish state? No, I'm saying it's racist to build a Jewish state through settler colonialism on land where there were Jews and Muslims and Christians living. You cannot build a Jewish majority state on stolen land that you cleansed ethnically of the indigenous population. Okay? This is not that hard to understand. Developing an ethno state is inherently a racist concept. It is racist when America tries to do it or when American dumb fucks say that they want to do it here. And it is racist when Israel does it too. I don't give a shit about claims of anti-Semitism. <laughs> anti-Semitism. Like, get the fuck out of here. It's anti-Semitic if you don't want me to do fascism. Like, shut the fuck up, dumb fuck. A lot of Christians are literally always forgotten about in this talk too. The shadow doesn't realize Israel is also killing Christian Palestinians. They don't give a fuck. Yes, that's why I don't think he's actually Israeli. <laughs> the reality is like hella, hella Israeli people do have that smoke for the Christians too. <laughs> but of course, those are like the settler guys. So maybe it's a little different. Maybe this is a liberal Zionist, but no, I don't know. Oh, do you have any more? Do you have any more dumb fucking takes? I sent you their TikTok like 10 minutes ago. Oh, that's awesome. I'm not going to look through it. You want me to? It was established on top of our villages um, in the late 40s. Okay, I know what you're saying. However, it's very well documented that Abraham purchased this land 4,000 years ago. That's a long time. It was established.
Oh my god. Oh my god. She actually does believe this? What the fuck? Dude. Damn, I didn't realize. My bad. What do I tell people who say that the Muslims have ethno states, i.e., neighboring countries, in their minds? They're not. You can immigrate there and fucking get a land and get a house if you want to by going through the proper protocols. Israel does not offer any fucking pathway to citizenship to non uh, uh, Jews of that sort. Yo, what is this person? What was she saying? She said Abraham bought Israel? Not in Saudi, though? Yeah, they can suck my dick. I don't fucking agree with Saudi Arabia either. That's so funny. Yeah, dude. I love I love Saudi Arabia. You know who actually loves Saudi Arabia? Israel, okay? And America. Dude, how are we going to buy the land back from God, dude? That's going to be really fucking hard. On top of our villages um, in the late 40s. Okay, I know what you're saying. However, it's very well documented that Abraham purchased this land 4,000 years ago. That's a long time. It was established on top of our villages um, in the late 40s. It's so funny. Back from God, so natives argument. Wait, what? We're making fun of you, you stupid fucking moron. Dude, I didn't even know. I'm not even kidding. This is like, is there like a Baptist adjacent like Judaism that I was unfamiliar with? I actually, I, I'm, I'm genuinely shocked. I'm learning new things about Judaism that I did not know. Is there like a literal textualism in, in, the, in Judaism as well? Yes, it's called American Jews. No, American Jews are not like this. Stop. No. Fuck no. I don't agree with that chatter, but it's important to acknowledge that there are Muslim ethno states that used to have many Jews in them. I agree. And that was wrong. It's ironic because I think it was Arafat that suggested a potential relocation program back to Morocco for Moroccan Jews that wanted to go back to their... Uh, homeland if they wanted to and of course nobody fucking took that up because why the fuck would they they're like no we like israel we want to stay here anyway holla back boy can you explain to me you're you're orthodox right or formerly orthodox or maybe even currently orthodox can you explain to me what the fuck's going on with this person's argument? She's saying that Abraham, she like is, is claiming that Abraham bought Israel 4,000 years ago. And I, I, <laughs> and I personally thought that like in Judaism, there isn't uh um, in Judaism, there isn't like this fucking, <laughs> almost biblical, like, scripturalist, literalist interpretation in any sect that I'm aware of. And I'm, 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 like, confused. Came from a modern Orthodox Jewish community. God promised Moses Israel, but he died right before he could enter. No, no I know, but, like, I just, I don't know. No, she's not talking about, I don't think she's talking about... Oh, she is maybe talking about this. The Hebron Purchase. Wait, what's your job? No Moses. Why Moses? The most secular temple in LA teaches this shit. I'm telling you from experience.
Why Moses? They took it by force at that point. No Arab country requires you to be Muslim to get citizenship except Saudi Arabia. Other GCC countries have non-Muslim citizens, but just like Japan, it's really hard to get citizenship, but I know many who have gotten naturalized. Yeah. And also, there's like really fucking strict immigration processes in, in many of those other Gulf states as well. It's, it's also bad and unacceptable, especially the treatment of like migrant workers and whatnot in many of the Gulf nation states. Okay? There's a difference, however, that it is not conducted through like ethnic demographic concerns. Whereas in Israel, it is very carefully mapped out to create an ethno state. Ultimately, your argument revolves around other countries got to do it. Can I, can I do it too? You know what I mean? Is this not what about -ism? Even if every Muslim country were an ethno state, it's not right. Yeah, I know. It is what about -ism. That's what I was explaining. It's like very stupid to be like, well, other countries got to fucking have their own ethno states. Why can't we? Is fucking insane. Anyway. I saw maternity kits that have been rejected. I saw UK aid that had been rejected. As Lord Cameron says, UK aid has sometimes sat for up to three weeks waiting to go in for no real reason that could be determined. And yet, just yesterday, the IDF said that it was doing its part and it addressed the UN directly and said, try doing yours. So no matter what Lord Cameron says, the IDF is sticking to that line. Look, unfortunately, the Foreign Secretary has been very clear. Israel is not opening enough crossings. They are not doing it for enough hours. They are not doing it for enough days. And there are arbitrary restrictions which are changing on a daily basis. Now, there are real challenges getting aid around in Gaza as well. Hey. That is because we are seeing the theft of some aid. But also because, again, right, as Lord Cameron makes clear, Israel oh. is not approving many humanitarian aid passes. I was told that UNRWA, uh, the UNRWA tree tried to go into Gaza earlier this week and that he himself was rejected at the border. Judaism isn't an ethical group. Wait, what? the fuck are you saying judaism is absolutely an ethno religion what the fuck why am i teaching a jewish person facts about their own religion what the fuck's happening jews don't have an ethnic there are jews who are europeans and jews who are latin american no are you kidding me This argument is so fucking stupid, especially because, okay, it's not, let's say it's not, which it is, okay? You're, you're making the distinction between, like, Sephardi, Mizrahim, and, and Ashkenazi Jews, okay? And Ethiopian Jews. Let's say that they are all just simply a religion. You are then now building a religious ethnostate. I said Judeo-supremacist state, okay? It doesn't matter. And if that was the case, you would be fine, I guess, with, like, converting Palestinians into Judaism, which I don't think you are. Which is still incredibly fucking immoral and cruel. from being able to go in so there are serious challenges going on this isn't easy none of us are pretending that it is easy to get aid in but the reality is that the british government's assessment is that israel is not doing enough to meet its commitments this discussion all started with an exchange on twitter with elon levy the israeli government spokesman with you understand he's been suspended after that exchange did, did the uk government raise concerns directly with the israeli government about that 
I genuinely don't know. And look, you know, I've obviously had a lot of people claiming that I'm behind this decision. You know, if I had a choice about what Israel would be doing as a result of my discussions on Twitter, it would not have anything to do with somebody's employment. It would be changing the amount of aid that are getting into Gaza. That is what I want as the outcome. And that is my objective throughout all of this. But he responded to your claims. That was his choice. Did you feel that he overstepped? Well, unfortunately, what he was saying was factually inaccurate. You know, he essentially said to the UK, test us. Those are the exact words he used. He said, we can get another 100 trucks of aid into Gaza every day if you send them to us. That is not true. He also said that the UN, as I said earlier, had asked for crossings to be closed on Saturdays. That is also categorically untrue. And I think it's really important when we are talking about people's lives that we are factually accurate in the conversations we have. And that is why I challenged him repeatedly. Alicia Kearns, thank you very much for speaking with us. Thank you. The woman you're about to hear from might never have found herself in the national spotlight. Michelle Morrow is her name. She wasn't expected to win her Republican primary race to be North Carolina's top public school official. Then last week, in an upset, she did win. And when she did, her extreme and controversial comments began getting attention. Last Friday, CNN's K-File reported that she has, for example, tweeted under her now dormant personal account, about wanting to see former President Obama put in front of a firing squad on pay-per-view saying, quote, we could make some money back from televising his death. That's just one of a string of social media postings between 2019 and 2021 in which Ms. Morrow made suggestions about executing Obama and other prominent Democrats for treason, including Congresswoman Alan Omar, North Carolina Governor Roy Cooper, former New York Governor Andrew Cuomo. The median American voter is just a straightforward suburban fascist. Just, just the average, average suburban fascist, dude. <laughs> Small business owner. Hillary Clinton, Senator Chuck Schumer, and then President-elect Biden. In the Biden tweet, here's how she answered the question, will you follow Joe Biden's advice and wear a mask for 100 days? Never, she replies. We need to follow the Constitution's advice and kill all traitors. Ms. Morrow has also promoted QAnon tweeting the QAnon slogan, where we go one, we go all, multiple times. She also tweeted that the actor Jim Carrey was, quote, likely searching for adrenochrome, which is a reference to a QAnon conspiracy theory, which claims that celebrity, celebrities harvest the, uh, harvest the blood and drink the blood of children to prolong their own lives. That's what they believe. In addition to all that, Ms. Morrow, who, again, is the candidate to be North Carolina's top public school official, has called public schools socialism centers and indoctrination centers. Now, as part of that K-File report, CNN reached out to Morrow and her campaign multiple times to get her side of the story, but received no response. So after publication of the K-File story, Morrow tweeted the following. According to at K-File and at CNN and at CNN Politics, Obama's drone attacks on hundreds of innocent Muslims in Yemen are not treasonous. The insanity of the media demonstrates the need to teach K-12 students real history and critical thinking skills. Which, of course, doesn't directly address the multiple social media postings we just listed. So with that in mind, CNN Shimon Prokipes went to North Carolina to try and speak with her in person. It took him several days. They finally caught up to her outside a Wake County Republican Party event in Raleigh. Shimon joins us now. So what did she have to say? Yeah, Anderson, so she went to this uh, GOP convention. It's a local GOP convention in Wake County. There were other elected officials there, including the lieutenant governor, Mark Robinson, who himself uh, has had some controversy and has had some controversial statements. And we finally got to... Wait, Mark Robinson is the one that said uh, that he... the one that quoted Hitler, right? And then was like, oh, well, just because I'm quoting Hitler doesn't mean I agree with him. What is going on in North Carolina, bro? How does North Carolina have, like, wilder fucking dudes than South Carolina, bro? What is going on right now? I mean, it's always been racist, yes, but, like, <clears throat> I would expect it to be, like, at least not <clears throat> in, in, the, in the leading contender among the two Carolinas. Why is North Carolina seemingly more racist than South Carolina? Someone explain this to me. Is it because we just don't, like, South Carolina doesn't have access to internet, so we don't hear it? Is that what it is? 
speak to her as she was leaving. Take a look at that exchange. Hi, Miss Morrow. How are you? Hey, I'm doing fine. All right. How did it go in there? Hey, it went great. Yeah? It went great. You feeling yeah. good? Who are you guys with? I'm Shimon Prokopes. I'm with CNN. Oh, have you been uh, parked in my neighborhood by any chance? We've been trying to talk to you, yes. Okay. Well, um, you, can, so you can go through my uh, I understand, campaign. but I have you now, so Thanks. why don't we talk now? No, no need. Why not? Well, I want to ask you, do you still stand? I'm not talking to you, ma'am. Do okay. you still stand by your comments about uh, former President Barack Obama and that he should be executed, calling for the death of other presidents? Do you stand by that? Do you stand by those comments? Have a good night. Do you stand by what you've said about the public no education comment. system and that it needs to be destroyed? No comment. Do you stand by that? No comment. Do you understand the concern that people have? No with comment. this nomination hey, that you I have now a have. Question. Do you vote in North Carolina? Then keep your eyes on your own paper. Well, let me ask you. I've, 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 read, I've read papers so here too. Keep your eyes on your own paper. And the concerns that people have with your nomination and the things that you have said. People in New York have concern over people my nomination. All in North people Carolina. all across the country. All really? Yes. Why are they concerned about. Bro, that's crazy. She said North Carolinas don't have concern over me saying I want to execute Barack Obama on pay per view. They definitely do have, come on, dude. Get out of here with your fucking New York values telling me I can't fantasize about Obabe's execution on television. Mind your god dang New York business. Mind your god dang New York, New York values. Leave it at the door, buddy. It's North Carolina. We ain't got no time for this foo ass bullshit. We talk about executing old Bobby on social media out here, bitch. North Carolina, do you know that education is a problem in this entire country? So maybe they need to focus on what's going on in your state of New York, which, by the way, is where I grew up. Maybe they need to focus on what's going on in California, where children are not getting the education that they need. Maybe they need to focus on what they're doing in Michigan. Because right now in North Carolina, I'm focused on helping the families of North Carolina for their children to get quality education, for them to be safe, and for us to be sure that our money is going into the classroom rather than bureaucracy. That's what I've been focusing on. That's what I've been fighting for for the last five years, going to the General Assembly and dealing with those issues. Right, but so that is why I'm running. I understand so that, but you, you can, have said such hurtful things, too, in terms of the education system. I have system to tell you. About transgender Everyone students. is so done with the gotcha moment. This is not a gotcha. Um, These, is. Are this, words, this is, These are your own words, ma'am. These are your own words. This has nothing you to have do said with education. That the How former do you know president, those are my words? Because you tweeted. Are those you not your have, tweets? Do you deny saying that? You have an opportunity now. I am telling you. Do you deny you, saying that? I am do, telling you. Are you denying that you said that in those tweets? I am telling you. Have you that I'm going to have discuss you talked education. about the indoctrination of children by teachers? I am telling you. Have you talked about that? Have you said that about students? Have you seen any of me going to the school board for the last five years? Because you will have my answer. So, Shimon, clearly she, she didn't answer your question. She didn't want to talk about the tweets about executing no. President Obama or Biden. Has Ms. Morrow ever explained her tweets calling for the execution, these executions? We need to focus on quoting Hitler in all states. Yeah, I mean, I feel like legitimately, if you're if you're talking about, like, executing Barack Obama, like, unironically saying Jim Carrey is, like, eating baby spinal fluid and shit, like, yeah, that's pretty concerning, I think. Like, all of that is very much concerning to me. Uh, it is not, I don't know, it's, it's very concerning stuff. Well, no, not, not exactly. She's deflected a lot. Uh, she's tried to suggest, and perhaps like she did to me, that maybe it wasn't even written by her. How do I know? She said to me at one point that it was something that, that she uh, posted. So she's deflected. She's, uh, of course, I mean, She defined. could clear that up. She, she could clear it up very simply just by answering, <laughs> answering the question. 
Yeah, I mean, it's not that difficult to do, but you can see there um, that when I wanted to talk about some of those things that she has said, and they're very hurtful. I mean, there are people uh, in this state who are very concerned about what she has said and just her lack of empathy and understanding uh, in, in the different issues that affect students and children. Uh, and yeah, when you look back at everything she has said, it is very troubling. Um, and she could clear so much of this up. But the bottom line is she's now in a position to get elected to a position where she will be running a school system with a million and a half students and a massive budget. And then she would ha just have this um, you know, she would have the podium. She would have a place uh, to speak and, and to say what it is that she is feeling more widely. And that is certainly very concerning uh, to people here, Anderson. Jerome Prokopis, uh, thanks very much. Joining us now is Republican strategist and North Carolinian Doug High, who recently tweeted, quote, North Carolina Republicans dump this lunatic. Doug, wh what does this say about the Republican Party in North Carolina? To an extent, the Republican Party nationwide, that this person is the GOP nominee for such an important job? I and mean, do you think voters realized these tweets that she had sent out, the support of QAnon? No, ab absolutely not. Look, this was a down ballot race. It wasn't one of the top tier races. Obviously, you know, you had Trump running for president, uh, Mark uh, Robinson running for governor, which are the two marquee races. This is down ballot. It gets fewer votes. It was a low turnout year. Uh, about 25% of um, eligible voters uh, voted in this primary. So I don't think they knew um, exactly everything that she said. A lot of this has come out since the election. But I see so much of this in, in every direction, Anderson. Uh, this is bad. These are not just appalling statements. These are the worst of the worst statements, calling to assassinate political opponents and so forth. As a former campaign hack myself, uh, having spent a lot of time in, in Wake County in Raleigh, that's not the state party headquarters on Hillsborough Street. But what I see is bad staffing, allowing your candidate to walk that far with Shimon being able to get every question in that he could. You want to have a car there so you can get your candidate out immediately because you know, and this is problem number three, you don't have good answers to these questions unless you can just simply say that either you didn't do them, which clearly she did, or what I said was wrong and apologize for it. Unfortunately, in American politics, these days we don't really reward uh, people for standing up and saying that they made a mistake. We don't reward the apologies. That's one of the lessons that Donald Trump sort of taught us in 2016. I was in Wake County uh, in Raleigh the day after the Access Hollywood tape came out. And I would have told you that day, Anderson, that there's no way Donald Trump could win. The reality is he did. Now, North Carolina has a lot of close races. This may be one of them. Um, we go back and forth with our politics as, as far as yeah. uh, senators and governors. Um, so she could still win. Uh, but we've learned the lesson. And I think this is what she's learning. It's a bad lesson that but maybe it, if you don't apologize, you can get away with it. I mean, she also, you know, the, the whole trafficking in, in QAnon you know, uh, talking about adrenochrome, I mean, all of that is based on, on anti-Jewish, you know, horrible mm -hmm. anti-Jewish tropes which were used by the, the Nazis about Jews drinking the blood of, of children. I mean, the idea that this person could be head of the school system in North Carolina is, it's quite extraordinary. It, it's extraordinary. And look, it would be extraordinary if she were also the insurance commissioner candidate or a state senator or, or basically anybody uh, running for governor. Unfortunately, though, Anderson, in our politics right now, we are so stratified and we've seen the parties go so tribal. It's not even so much red versus blue anymore. It's almost shirts versus skins that everything that we do in our politics comes down to that sort of existential level. And right. so but I'm I mean, not if surprised calling for the, If calling for the executions of a former president and a president-elect is not disqualifying for, you know, a, mm -hmm. an elected official in America or running a school system who's talking about teaching the real history. I mean, is there anything that's disqualifying? Well, I mean, this no. should be it. And obviously, again, I don't think that the voters, uh, Republican primary voters in that case knew, yeah. but this should be a good example for, we have a new state, uh, we have a new RNC chair, um, Michael Watley. He's also the state party chair in, uh, of North Carolina. I've known him for 20 years. Michael, this is a time to stand up and show leadership. This has to be a line that we don't cross because we've seen political violence against Republican members of Congress. Dude, this is why when somebody is somebody constantly bashing D-Man and banning anyone that says anything remotely nice about him, dude, you guys already have every fucking subreddit on lock. Like that clip that that blows my mind, honestly. Like 
Do you think I control the subreddit? I don't. Okay. I'm sorry that you couldn't do your brigading and defending of destiny in a subreddit that I don't even fucking visit. Why are you bitching in here, dumb fuck? God damn. <sighs> Why don't you worry about fucking Reddit uh, doing an IPO, you know what I mean? That's funny, because when I watch... Because I watch you and asking a genuine question, but you know, whatever. Man, shut the fuck up and suck my entire dick from the back, you stupid fucking bitch. Oh, I'm just asking a genuine question. What's up with this? Bro, you're defending a dude who literally said if Israel nuked the entirety of Gaza and killed all 2 million Palestinians, I still don't think it would be considered a genocide, okay? I'm sorry that, like, you know, you can't say fucking nice things about Nicholas Fuentes in my subreddit either, dumb fuck, okay? Don't come in here and try to do the, oh, I'm just asking genuine questions. Like, everybody fucking understands what's going on here. Jesus Christ, dude. Uh, why can't I say good things about Nicholas Fuentes in your subreddit? I don't understand. Uh, well, why can't I do that? <laughs> It's kind of messed up. I'm just simply asking questions here, brother. Like, the Northern Lion, the Northern Lion take is the best one, okay? Back in the day, people used to, back in the day, people used to just be like, I'm trolling. I'm a fucking piece of shit. I'm trolling. Nowadays, it's like, why did you ban me? I was just simply asking a normal question. Here, this is the Northern Lion clip. See, back in my day, 20 years ago, the trolls were fucking goblins, bro. They were like, they knew that they were doing bad things and irritating people. And then when people got irritated, they typed, you mad, and they won. They got permit, but they understand that they understood that they were the villains. Now the trolls are like, mm, does anybody else think that this person should be locked in a mental hospital? And then when someone's like, you have been permanently banned from the chat, they're like, I was just talking. I was just talking. I was, you are my friend. Like, what, bro, go back to being a gremlin. <laughs> Where is he? Did he? Did he respond? Did he respond with like, uh, did he respond basically immediately? Yeah, you're jealous. Can't believe someone gets under your skin so much. <laughs> no, don't ban that guy. That's awesome. You're right, chatter. You caught me. You caught me, Chatter. I'm jealous of two-time divorced, zero friend having, only fucking manipulating people in his orbit by uh, offering them a crumb of clout. Dude who fucking left his child and his first wife behind to go fuck a fan's girlfriend, married the fan's girlfriend, only to get divorced by the fan's girlfriend. It was getting fucking ripped to shreds. I'm fucking so jealous, dude. I can't. <clears throat> like. <sighs> there is definitely. Like, there, there are things you could have said in here that would have, like, maybe garnered some level of support from the people. But dick riders of Mr. Bonarelli are so divorced from reality, just like their daddy is divorced two times. Dick riders of Bonarelli are so divorced from reality that, like, to any normal person that here's what you are saying they go really you you think like you think this dude is jealous of like a genuinely legitimately radioactive individual five foot four can't grow a fucking normal beard literally has zero normal friends constantly in a fucking state of panic duking it out with like every single person that he's ever encountered regularly burning bridges and holding that up as like some kind of uh, intellectual standing got fucking cumstered once he bit more than he can chew as far as like 
duking it out with a dude who actually knows what he's talking about and is just this stubborn. <sighs> Come on, man. There are definitely like, there are definitely things that you could say, but I mean, you're comparing me to an objectively, objectively miserable person. His situation might be, yeah, why can't I defend genocide in your subreddit? Exactly. That's how we started off, by the way. Where's that chatter now? Did he did he go crying into his uh chat room? Is he still in here? Does he have any any more cool takes? <laughs> Last time I was in here, you said you and D are as bad as each other. You can't go five minutes without mentioning the other. Also insane. Because my, I don't mention destiny. Uh, I don't mention destiny policy. Only recently was destroyed due to his unhinged pro genocide takes that dude has been basically fucking living in that universe i wasn't talking about destiny either you cut one video with divorce man and all of a sudden you're obsessed with him i know by that very same metric destiny has been psychopathically obsessed for years which he really is i mean he's made hundreds of videos about me over the course of the past four or five years now hundreds and he tries to justify it by saying oh he's because he's like a really big political figure a really big political figure that we're supposed to be in agreement on because he's supposedly a liberal or a progressive that and then their then their counter always is well why don't you fucking uh ever well you do a lot about uh you do a lot about uh, uh ben shapiro you do a lot of videos about ben shapiro okay Of course I do a lot of videos about Ben Shapiro. I hate Ben Shapiro. I disagree with Ben Shapiro. Ben Shapiro is a reactionary conservative. What is this? Did you see drone Norm dropping the vermicelli? Moron specialis. Oh my God, dude, this is crazy. The first time I heard a D here was after the whole streaming is the hardest job and you mentioned him again. The whole debating Israel thing happened. Yeah. Uh. I can't believe the guy left after he said you're jealous. I, I thought he had more funny things to say that we could clown on. All right, let's finish Against this. Democratic congressmen or congresswomen, obviously with Gabby Giffords. We know that this could happen again. This is a time for leadership to stand up and mm -hmm. say no. Doug, hi. Appreciate your time tonight. Thank you. Thank you. We turn to the scandal of one of baseball's biggest stars. The Dodgers have fired the interpreter for Shohei Otani after he was accused of a massive theft from Otani to pay off gambling debts. 
Whit Johnson has the story. Good morning, Whit. Hey, Michael. Good morning. The Dodgers' Shohei Otani is Major League Baseball's highest paid player. His interpreter now fired, accused of racking up millions of dollars in illegal gambling debts. The scandal now rocking the sport just as the season gets underway. Here is Otani in Musgrove, and he rips one. This morning, baseball superstar Shohei Otani, fresh off signing his historic $700 million contract last year, is taking a major hit. A two run homer, Shohei Otani. The Dodgers firing Otani's longtime friend and interpreter, Ipe Misuhara, after he allegedly stole more than $4.5 million from Otani. Okay, nobody believes that this is Otani's interpreter, right? Because, like, when I looked at this story, immediately I was like, the interpreter had $4.5 million in gambling debt? The interpreter? And this also literally, I mean, am I a conspiracy theorist? Am I actually a conspiracy theorist? Because I think that, like, the deferment of the contract was already, like, a wild thing. But I think maybe he did the deferment of the contract to, like, stop himself from literally ruining the bag. I think that, along with this, kind of goes along with the Michael Jordan narrative. It's not unique. Otani is not the first, allegedly. And it will, will not be the last, allegedly, to be a degenerate gambling addict. <laughs> Emma, yes, if he plays for the Tigers one day, I will deny ever saying this. Do you think Otani deferred his salary so he wouldn't gamble it away, or is this story true? No, I that's I, I literally do think that he deferred his salary for this reason as well. Before this, I thought it was weird and 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 unacceptable like not unacceptable, but like hard to explain. After this story, it feels very much easy to explain. <laughs> Welcome back to Sports Center, presented by ESPN Bet. For more on the Otani situation, we go to our FanDuel MLB insider, Jeff Passan, at our DraftKings studio in Los Angeles, brought to you by Caesars Sportsbook. Jeff, how could something like this happen? <laughs> I'm legit confused. What are you implying? I'm not even, I'm saying this is pure speculation. It's pure, it's an allegation, okay? It's a speculation. I don't know if this is real or not, but I think given how unlikely it is for a fucking interpreter to actually have uh, racked up $4.5 million in gambling debt, or rather be able to steal $4.5 million in general, that this is more so a substitution and that, he was operating not for himself, but instead for potentially Otani is what I'm thinking. And he is just a fall guy for Otani is what I'm thinking. When did Shohei find out about all this? What do you think is the actuality of this? And what do we know right now at this standpoint of these? I mean, he's fucking awesome, by the way. Don't get me wrong. Like, this guy is the GOAT. I get it. I don't even like baseball. I don't understand it that much, but even I get like, he's, he seems fucking sick. Situation as a whole. And I know that's a lot of questions, but just like, what do we know right now, Jet? And why are yeah. they getting along right here? If there's a chance that Shohei knows that this guy stole four and a half million from, him, or did he not know that at that time yesterday morning? Like, how's it all kind of unfolding here? Yeah, let me let me give you the timeline there because I can actually explain that one. There, there's so much Pat in this story that we don't know right now and that we can't explain. Uh, but at that particular point, uh, Shohei Otani knew that there was gambling involved with Ipe Mitsuhara, his interpreter. Um, at that point, the story that had been told to Tisha Thompson, our reporter at ESPN, was that. <laughs> He doesn't know the details because his interpreter was fired. God, I'm so stupid. That's so stupid. I'm a stupid person for that. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, M. Hud's joke is even dumber. He said, <laughs> to his interpreter, get lit. <laughs> Otani to his interpreter, get ready to learn Japanese, question mark. Uh, uh, Ipe Mitsuhara had gambled on international soccer, the NFL, college football, NBA, um, you know, not baseball, uh, all the other That's sports. That's huge. That's and big. That's big. That's that big is. news. That it's it's an important part of the story, certainly, because, you know, mm. it is different than Pete Rose. It is different than the Black Sox scandal. Um, uh, so at that point, he knew that there was gambling that had gone on. Uh, you can go into the clubhouse, in fact, after the game and Dodgers players were sitting down and a group of people, uh, you know, front office people for the organization got up and said, hey, there's going to be a story coming out about gambling. Ipe, would you like to say something? And he was just extremely apologetic. Then they left and went back to the hotel. And at some point there, it seems that is where the story changed. Because the expectation was that, you know, this was going to be running this story based on what Ipe Mitsuhara had said to Tisha Thompson, our reporter, uh, on Tuesday. Um, then Wednesday, suddenly, Otani's people come back and say, wait, 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 wait. We disavow the information that was given to you in an interview that we helped set up. Instead, this is our statement. And the statement was that there is a massive theft of money that has gone on. Uh, you know, we have documents that show $4.5 million in wire transfers out of a bank account to the alleged illegal bookmaker. Now, what happened during that time, we do not know yet. And, and why this story changed. Bro, this is. This is literally a Yakuza subplot. Like, this is the most... What is going on, dude? This and the Yakuza guy giving nuclear arms or nuclear-enriched uh, uranium to the paramilitaries in Myanmar for in exchange for drugs and a rocket launcher is the most Yakuza subplot shit of all time. What is going on? The world is, is wisening up. Or rather, I guess the world is catching up to Yakuza. So quickly, was there information that was found out? And if so, what was that information? Or uh, did something with the original story suddenly not jive anymore? Womp, 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 This is the stuff, Pat, that... When you put it out there, and when there is no transparency about what transpired, you're going to get suspicion. You're going to get skepticism. Oh, you're yeah. going to get questions. You're going to get people who are assuming, unfortunately, the worst in this situation. Because you can look at this right now. I'm an Angels fan, and now it makes sense that he didn't resign with the Angels. Probably has someone in the org helping it pay gamble. Now, and say, if they're changing their story about this, they've got to be covering something up. Now, I, I think going forward, it's important to look at this. Like, if he stole four and a half million dollars, there are going to be charges that are pressed. Grand, and grand, if grand theft. Yeah. That's no shot Otani is directly involved in shady shit. He just locked up a 10-year, $700 million contract. We know, dude. Yeah, did you read a little bit further into the contract? Because there's something very weird about the contract. This was literally not just controversial because of the massive amount. This was also controversial because it was deferred. I feel like you only do that. I feel like you only do that if you're like bad with money, like so aggressively bad with money due to some other problem. Lamel coping Angels fan. It's literally so they can sign more players and win now. I don't know, man. That's 
Yes. And and if charges are pressed in this situation, we are going to get a full public accounting of what actually happened. We're going to know the extent of the money. You know, we we found four point five million dollars in wire transfers. Uh, there could be more potentially. We don't know. There could be other bank accounts. We don't like there are so many factors in this situation that we don't know right now that jumping to any conclusions, I think, is irresponsible. But, hey, that's what the Internet's for. The Internet's an irresponsible place. And well, people are going to go yeah. and it, not everywhere. No, the, the internet's it's it's okay. It's okay. The internet's going to let it's, their it's jokes what? fly. The internet's going to yeah. let their jokes yeah. fly. I think the fact that they came out with this information and changed their story when leads me to believe that even if Otani wasn't directly gambling, maybe he paid the gambling debt. And then realize that that looks really bad. So they're saying that he stole it. And his friend is like honorably falling on the sword. Seems like his friend is honorably falling on the sword in either direction. Either he was facilitating bets for Otani and is just eating it, or he's taking on. But you can't fucking say that he stole $4.5 million without legal scrutiny. That's the thing. I don't think you can just, like, get away with, like, claiming that someone did that. This is by far your worst take ever. What do you guys think is going on? I don't know enough about sports. I just like having... This is my favorite subject to talk shit about, okay? I'm going to pull a Philip DeFranco here and be like, what do you guys think? Leave us, in the co leave us your thoughts in the comment section below. I love, I love sport conspiracies because they're so fucking stupid. But the only expertise I have that I bring to the table here is my expertise as a Yakuza specialist. I'm the only white boy to ever do it. Ain't nobody's got white boy swagu like me. Okay. I will join the Yakuza one day and I am an esteemed Yakuza chronicler of events. Okay. So for that reason, for that reason, I'm telling you, this is like basically a Yakuza subplot. Huh. This is incredibly suspicious, though. Come on, guys. $4.5 million is so much money. Ani to pay off gambling debts. Misuhara allegedly placed wagers with an illegal sports book in California. Our colleagues at ESPN reviewed bank information they say shows Otani's name on two $500,000 payments made last year. He said that Otani had no knowledge of his gaming debts and had not paid the money through the wire transfers. Misuhara denies ever betting on baseball and claims Otani had no knowledge of his gambling debts or transfers. A spokesman for Otani says the baseball star has been the victim of a massive theft, and we are turning the matter over to the authorities. You have to look into it. How did he get access to Otani's millions? Hours before he was fired, Misuhara was seen talking to Otani during the Dodgers game in Seoul, South Korea. Otani later celebrating his first official hit as a Dodger. Two, two, rips one and he gets on top of it. Fans going wild for Otani, tickets selling out in less than one hour. But this morning, a different atmosphere in the dugout for the second game in the series. And Otani is now trying to deal with the distractions overnight. That Manager Dave Roberts with little to say about the scandal before the first pitch. Shohei's ready. Um, I, I know that uh, he's preparing in a hitter's meeting right now and, and ready to go for tonight's game. Now, an attorney for the sportsbook operator told ESPN their client never met or spoke with Otani himself. The interpreter, Mizuhara, says he did not know the betting was... Damn, dog. Everyone's like, no, 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 not Otani. The sportsbook specifically said, we've never met Otani. Who is Otani, I say? I didn't even know that such a person plays bas basketball. <laughs> what does he play? Football? Basketball? What sports is he doing? Is it a Formula One racer? What's happening? The other sport conspiracy that I personally believe is that Michael Jordan's uh, father was executed due to his gambling debts. That's another one of those like sport conspiracies that I legitimately kind of believe, like almost wholeheartedly.
but it's like considered to be a conspiracy. Was illegal. He says, though, he learned his lesson the hard way. Did you know they put a samurai helmet on Otani yes. every home run he hits? Launch a two-run homer. He makes it 11 to That's three. That's fucking dope, dude. First pitch to Shohei Otani. A high, towering drive into dead center field. Back there is Weimer, and it's gone. Up where they parked the cameras. Ohio Gazimas, Milwaukee. Shohei. <laughs> Yo, he got them white boys saying Ohio Gozaimas. No way. Dude, that's crazy. Jumping on the first pitch. Lamb jumping on the first pitch. Halo's up to nothing. That a cutter. Keep thinking they're going to throw a change up. Yes. Home run number seven. That's so sick. What uniform would they give him if he was German? Come on, bro. You're fucking comparing samurais, which existed far beyond, like, the most war criminal uh, uh, parts of Japanese history. Jesus Christ. Don't do that. No, I'm joking. Holy shit. I thought you were, like, that big of a fucking Otani hater that you're just, like, saying <laughs> samurais equal SS. Bro, talking like they gave him Imperial Japan uniform. Yeah. Anyway. That's wild. So, yeah. Uh, definitely not a gambler, okay? But don't gamble at the top of the hour with whether you're going to see the three-minute ad break or not. Subscribe ahead of time for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime. That way, you won't see the ad break at the top of the hour. I'm so fucking offended. It goes deep. The whole team celebrated because the Angels had a huge Japanese following, especially after winning the World Baseball Classic the year before. I'm hate watching you from now on. Never mind. I don't want you to talk about sports. First city slander on Philly and now Otani. Wait, what? I said it's sick that they're doing the samurai helmet thing for everyone that gets uh, home runs. I thought that that's cool as hell. Why are you offended? I think it's cool. His first season at MLB was even crazier. After every home run he hit, they would show an Asian fan in the crowd. That's awesome. <clears throat> I'm a Dodgers fan, and this is blending my worlds together in a way that makes my pee-pee tingle. Jesus Christ. And we'll never do it again. One of the complicating factors here, California does not allow sports betting, but other states do. Mm. So part of the issue, according to the interpreters, that he did not know that this was any different than the other betting he'd been doing in other mm. places. All right. This so, is a talker. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Serious bet. A lot of money. A lot of money. All right. Thanks so much, Whit. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News. It's more like the interpreter used Otani's name to get the money for the bets. Dude, I'm not going to lie. I still kind of believe that Otani, I kind of believe that he did that, dude. Also here. There you go. One more glance. Gambling is really bad. He found out when the rest of the team did. It Bay brought up his gambling problem, and players basically said so. Then team owner Mark Walter said Otani paid off It Bay's debts, and that's when Shohei allegedly went to another translator to confirm what he just heard. So the question is, did It Bay have access to Otani's accounts, or did Otani... What the fuck is this? This is like... Who is this guy? MLB recaps? MLB show? Yeah, what he fucked up on was that he stopped gambling before he hit it big, in my opinion. 
Like Otani's interpreter did not know that 90% of gamblers stop right before they hit a big. The bill is. I don't think people understand what a god he is at baseball. He's what people think Babe Ruth was due to hitting top level hitter batting averages while also being one of the best, if not the best pitcher in baseball. So I don't care if he's gambling. He's a fucking god. <laughs> Passed. This morning, one week after the House approved a bill that could potentially ban TikTok in the U.S., senators from both sides of the aisle have a stark new warning about the app. TikTok is a grave national security threat to Americans. TikTok is a gun aimed at Americans' heads. Senators yesterday got a classified briefing about how TikTok... No, it's not. Because if it was, you'd be defending it. Because you love guns that are oftentimes aimed directly in the heads of Americans. It's definitely not a gun aimed in the heads of Americans because you love that shit. It's so funny to say this. It's like, yeah, that's right. TikTok is a gun aimed at the head of Americans, which is why we're banning it, but not the thing that I'm using in this analogy, a gun which we will not ban because it's good. Even when it's aimed at the head of Americans, the real gun, I mean, like the one that kills people. We are banning TikTok though, because it's a Chinese gun. <laughs> it's so fucking funny to me when they call TikTok a national security weapon. I watch cat videos on it. What the fuck are they seeing on there? I saw horrifying things on Tic Tac. <laughs> you don't understand it. Owned by Chinese company ByteDance, uses the information it gathers against Americans. One concern, that the app could be used by China to influence the upcoming presidential election. I will say very emphatically, the American people need... Bro, you're a Democrat. Just let the app influence people to vote for Joe Biden. Come on, dude. Chill. A TikTok ban will boost Twitch viewership massive, massively. It's going to be good for you. I don't care. I don't want it to happen. I literally openly talked about that on PR Week. I know. A TikTok ban is literally good for my career. From an entirely self-interested point of view it is actually phenomenal for my career no it is because you have 170 million people that are going to be looking for like content the little content demons they're going to look for any other application some of them will inevitably move here it's going to be really good for youtube specifically youtube shorts having said that however I don't think that they should ban TikTok. It's ridiculous. <sighs> and deserve to. Sounds a bit like Cope. If you think 170 million social media users aren't going to inevitably go to other social media platforms after their favorite social media platform is banned, I don't know what to tell you. It's just normal math. Especially considering that TikTok also has live streaming as well. I do still think it's it's really fucked up and wrong, and they shouldn't do that. Good one from... <laughs> Dude, come on. Come on, man. Anyway, I don't think TikTok will sell it, uh, divest its own... I mean, I don't think ByteDance will divest from TikTok, because that's insane. Why would they? The American marketplace comprises of like a tiny part of TikTok's global appeal. Why in the ever loving fuck would the Chinese government go, okay, I guess we're going to now divest from this massively, massively successful 
uh, piece of, of application that we've, we've created. It's so fucking stupid. Yeah, if they didn't do it for India, they will not do it for America. Exactly. Well, America is a little bit different because, like, dominate culture, dominate the rest of the globe. Ultimately, though, I haven't seen anything this disgusting. <laughs> like, we think we're such fucking hot shit. That we literally looked at a successful app and we're like, you have to sell it to one of our guys. Come on, quick. Come on, give it to me. It's like, who the fuck do you think you are? Who the fuck do you think you are? What do you mean you have to give it to me? I like it. Give it to me now. I want to smack the shit out of the person that fucking behaves like this in the real world. You know what I mean? The fuck? What do you mean? Give it to me. Insane. My dad, a 68-year-old Arab, uses TikTok. There's no fucking way they're selling it. Yeah. Bro. Isn't that what China does to corporations? Yes. China builds the corporations. Yeah, it does. <clears throat> That part is correct. I wish America would do that too, by the way. Not the fucking Chinese corporations, though. To American corporations. Hello? I would love for these fucking decrepit vampires to actually get their money's worth by literally nationalizing Boeing, for example. We've already paid for it, and we still pay for it every goddamn day of the week. It's ours. Nationalize it now. Yes. I do want Chinese style command economy in the United States. Yes. Is it perfect? No. Is it better than what we have where the American government works at the behest of corporations and not the other way around like it is in China? Objectively, it's worse here in America. China doesn't even own the majority of TikTok. It doesn't matter. Any piece of it, any control, any stake over uh, uh, TikTok. What is your argument to say that big government is better than corporate, is not better than corporations? There is no corporations without big government. It's so fucking stupid. There is not a single thing in the United States of America that has been invented purely in the private sector, okay? It all relies on publicly funded research, either if we're talking about novel chemical compounds in, f in the field of medicine or the fucking internet at DARPA. Like, there's nothing. Nothing has ever been invented purely in the fucking goddamn private sector. Okay? The private sector relies on the public sector coming up with innovation so they can fucking grab onto it and then, you know, maintain a patent for as long as they possibly can as they tweak it a little bit and spend all their money and effort on marketing it to you. Spend all their money and effort on finding new ways of maintaining that patent. <clears throat> the worst part about it is that we get nothing in return. It's fucking bullshit. We pay the government taxes, those taxes and public funded research find new innovations. Then we pay the government again to subsidize these corporations so they can buy the fucking publicly funded research to begin with. Then we pay the private corporations again while simultaneously paying the government through a sales tax. It's ridiculous. Then we pay the private corporation a price to get the thing that they that we paid for, that we uh, uh, were responsible for the creation of, the innovation, then we pay the private corporation again, and again, and again, and again, and again, and, again. and then the private corporation goes and takes all the extra cash they have on hand and buys back their stocks in what is 
what used to be illegal, stock buybacks, that is not illegal any longer. Shouts out to Ronald Reagan for that one. And then when they have a fucking budget shortfall as a consequence of, you know, doing that thing instead of like, I don't know, upping their quality assurance, for example, like Boeing, as they constantly outsource, constantly fucking uh, cut different parts of the production and assembly lines and offshore it or, re uh, or, or delegate the responsibility to a third party that's going to do it for half the fucking price because they don't have that same level of quality assurance and they're not unionized, but the profits are going up. When that happens and they fucking go under, the American taxpayers bail them out again and again and again and again. And the cycle continues. I would much rather have a Chinese style system where if a company is failing due to malpractice, negligence, executive corruption, you fucking single out the executives that were responsible for it. You conduct an investigation. You bring them to the people's square and you execute them, depending on the severity of their crimes. If you're selling spoiled baby formula, you and the government official that played a role in you selling spoiled baby formula gets executed in the town square. Obviously, I'm not uh, being literal. I don't think that, uh, you know, I don't believe in capital punishment. But what I'm describing to you does happen in China. Anyway. Hassan, it really feels like you're actively avoiding the fact that Boeing and Raytheon clearly are just providing the global market with a good that they want at a price that the markets deem acceptable. The executives and shareholders have provided a service and deserve compensation for their good work. They deserve something, all right. I won't say... hear what we've just been told because they would be deeply frightened. ByteDance denies sharing Americans' data with the Chinese government. TikTok has urged its 170 million users in the U.S. to contact their lawmakers to oppose the bill passed by the House. Some of that lobbying now reportedly getting violent. The other part of this fucking, the other part of this conversation that's really stupid that like our politicians just completely fail to consider. And I think it's really, really dumb. Okay. Is one, the obvious side of it, the treats. You can't take the treats away. TikTok is a treat. Okay. You take a treat away, Americans are going to get pissed off because this entire global genocidal project falls apart if we can't have immediate gratification. Okay. The other part of it is that there's a shit ton of small business owners on TikTok, dumb fuck. The fuck do you think they're doing? 170 million user base in America. Do you know how many fucking small businesses started on TikTok? You dumbass. It's like one of the only fucking avenues where people can still make money. You know what I mean? Where do you think all these fucking drop shippers are coming from? Yeah. TikTok is profoundly important for an entire generation of small business owners, like millions, millions of small business owners. Yeah. And those guys vote. Yeah, petite bourgeois. Exactly. Exactly. You guys are joking. Because you're saying like, oh, this will destroy the slime industry. No, man, I'm not talking about that. There's a hell of people. There are, there's so much e-commerce happening on that fucking platform. You're crazy. You're, you're crazy to discount that as, a, as something that is not like a political price. That has a major political price, okay? It's not just fucking, you know, TikTok is not just like glitter conspiracies and ice giants uh, existing in the real world for sure. It definitely is massively important for millions of new small business owners that pop the fuck off. TikTok bypass Alibaba in e-commerce market share for people who are doubting you. Yeah, I, I mean, it's, that's global. So it's, it, it's, it's massively important. But it certainly is. It certainly is very important to a shit ton of American small business owners. 
So no matter how much juice APAC has in lobbying, okay, because they see TikTok as a threat, because it's not controlled by the State Department in the same way that other social media platforms can be, right? Because they're in the hands of good, God-fearing American uh, bloodless lizards. <laughs> or, you know, Elon is American enough, you know? But it's in the hands of a foreign adversary. It's not just APAC, it's Meta, I know. It, APAC does play a role in it, but so does Meta, and so does, I would suspect, Google as well. I'm shocked that, they, that I haven't seen any more information on that. I have seen, I have read reports on the Meta lobbying, uh, the lobbying initiatives launched by Meta as a direct competitor. But, having said that, The reason why I'm bringing up the small business owners is not because, like, I'm saying, oh, the petite bourgeois, they are so important. The American small business owners, they're so important to the American backbone. Like, I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying that small business owners vote, okay? For a massive number of Americans, TikTok is a treat. You can't take the treats away. That's going to be frustrating for them. And for an even more important, politically important group, you have small business owners. Okay, listen, if you ban TikTok, I will find you and shoot you. <laughs> That's a voicemail North Carolina Senator Tom Tillis says his office received. To have TikTok, huh. tell these... <laughs> yeah. That's, those are like 12-year-olds, by the way. You can hear them giggling in the background, Tom. Tom Tillis should be more worried about his actual constituents killing him because he... He didn't sufficiently defend Donald Trump, okay? <laughs> kids to do that doesn't actually help their case. It hurts their case. The bill passed by the House would force ByteDance to sell the app or face a ban in the U.S. Still no word if the Senate will take up that bill, but there appears to be growing support for some sort of action later this spring. The content on TikTok in China is pushing things like math and science and education and hard work. True. True. Why don't we do that? That's not what this bill is. This bill wouldn't change that. We can't do that, by the way, because we have First Amendment. Okay? That not, that's not what this bill is at all, though. What <laughs> the fuck? Also, we do have fucking... Uh, God, we do have censorship in this country... One of the stories I'm going to cover in a little bit is Alabama Governor Kay Ivey recently signing into law a bill that dictates that schools can no longer teach DEI adjacent things. What does that mean? And what they said in describing DEI, which is another substitute for woke, which is another substitute for black people, okay, or another substitute for things that offend white people. Uh, the intentionally vague bill, when asked what that means, uh, the way they described it was by stating anything that anything that offends the sensibilities of one race over another, anything that teaches racial superiority or racial inferiority. Yeah, it's CRT. Discipline. And here in the United States, the Chinese Communist Party is pushing things to our kids like self-harm and suicide. Senators are now considering holding a public hearing on the TikTok bill. Congress returns from spring break, April 8th. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking. Breaking news overnight from Washington, where the Biden administration has announced a new wave of forgiveness for student loans. For more on who qualifies. The video Congress put forward as evidence. Oh. Oh, You are becoming more and more loyal. To the CCP, China, good, communism, good. This is what happened to me, honestly. Like, it's so funny. This is literally what boomers think is going on, which is funny because, like, I'm doing that at twitch.tv slash Hasanabi every fucking day, like, unironically. America, bad. CIA, bad. ASIO, bad.
Go to China, you asshole. It will be glorious. I'm definitely going with BB No Money for sure. Let's go to Ed O'Keefe at the White House. Ed, good news for some. Indeed it is, Nate. Good morning. This applies to public service workers, firefighters, nurses, teachers who've been on the job 10 years or more, and it amounts to $6 billion in debt cancellation, all thanks to an existing federal program that had been little used until the last few years. And in a sign of how the president is trying to take a little more credit for this program in a tough election year, the White House says he'll be emailing another roughly 380,000 public service workers next week to let them know they're about two years away from being eligible for similar relief. Remember, the Supreme Court last year rejected the president's original big student loan forgiveness program, and the Education Department's working on new rules for a broader forgiveness plan. Tweaks to smaller existing loan forgiveness programs have helped the president give some of this relief, like the stuff being announced today. Now, overall, nearly 4 million Americans so far have been el made eligible for student loan forgiveness since he took office. And as the president works to cut costs for Americans, could be the kind of thing that helps mobilize voters in November. Nate? All right, Ed, thank you. Part of our... This guy I saw complaining about the t-shirts. Make sure to buy your Hassan Piker Capitalism and Decay merchandise now. He said, made in the U.S. with union labor as always. Thanks for the promo. I don't know why this guy thinks this is unknown. Like, I, I legitimately don't get it. Kai has a choking hazard in her mouth. No, she doesn't. It's a it's an Icelandic uh, lamb's horn or or sheep horn or goat horn or whatever the fuck. There you go, blast it. Bro, just a fan complaining about the price? It's $35. It's 35 fucking dollars. There's no way he's complaining about the price of the t-shirt that is $35. I thanked him for letting me know that I could get an influencer brand union made t-shirt for $35. Yeah. U.S. made, union made. In the words of Pokimane, I need, I need that clip, dude. Because she said it so perfectly. Look, if you're a broke boy, just say so. Streamer Pokimane. Look, if you're a broke boy, just say so. You know what I mean? Ah. Oh. Look, if you're a broke boy, just say so. They announced that Sean King is keynoting a Ramadan fundraiser in Minneapolis. This shit is ratioed to high hell, and they turned off the comments. Be honest, would you rather spend the monies on cookies or a t-shirt? Capitalism is when you do creative direction and then single-handedly max out Bayside's domestic union-made production capacity. Yes. Will you ever do a collab with a streetwear brand, or are you just going to keep it in-house? 
Did you know that Drew's dumbass, quote, in air quotes, activism is bankrolled by an Aussie billionaire who funds fascist parties? Uh, yes, I did know that. It is the least shocking thing. Many, many, I think, I think that it is, I think that it is uh, infinitely dumber that people do it for free. Because a lot of dumb fucks on Twitter do it for free. At least he's getting paid. You know what I mean? They just back down. No Sean King. Damn. We have heard concerns expressed directly and indirectly by our community regarding Sean King being the keynote at our annual Iftar fundraiser. Damn. They're coming after. They're coming after our fucking king, Sean King. They hate to see a Muslim man winning, dude. Cancel culture coming after the king. Message to Drew Paolo. Important message to Drew Paolo. Bro, this is hurt. Okay. This is not a hot dog. It's a hurt dog. Okay. So fuck my boy eating over here. I hope... <laughs> I just want some corn. God damn. That's a brat from the grill. That's seasoning. Oh, dude. M HUD, you stopped the video before the motherfucking glizzy gobble side started, dude. What the fuck? I wanted to see. I mean, listen, corn stuff is good, but I wanted to see my man devour that glizzy. The drip police came for Drew. <laughs> Chatter burnt is not a seasoning. <laughs> yeah, I know. Her training. This base Chinese shop owner is training these kids to eliminate Drew Paolo. <laughs> Okay, stand together. Okay. We need to ban Chinese shop owners that a TikTok brother. What the fuck is this? Yeah. China is taking over the UK and you're ordering, you're looking at your phone ordering DoorDash. First of all, I'm not looking at my phone. I'm dealing with some shit uh, simultaneously. Um, secondly, guess what? I think it's good that China is taking over the UK. We would like more of this in my backyard, please. The food will get better for sure. Oh, I mean, everything is an improvement. Everything is an improvement.
Answer for your homophobia. I will not answer. As promised. It turns out eating a hot dog with only a few teeth takes a long time. Dude, he's breathing like Sam Sillick sitting on top of a fucking squat machine, dude. Don't yuck other people's yuck. Uh, excuse me. Don't yuck other people's yum. This is my yum. I love this man. He looks like a real life Obelix. Like he, he does. He looks like a real life character from like he does. He looks like he shouldn't exist in the real world. You know what I mean? Who's all solutions through by tweaking Hold existing programs. I'm downloading Dragon's Dogma. I didn't even realize it came out today. I'm so, I'm so cooked. But hopefully I'll be able to, oh my God, it's, oh, it's only 60 gigs. That's not bad. Wait, does it play on the Steam Deck? Oh my God. Oh my God. I know what I'm going to be fucking playing. I know what I'm going to be playing on the fucking plane. I was going to play Final Fantasy VII, but God damn. This is. I saw one video, okay? I saw one video of Dragon's Dogma of the giant that fell on the, like, on an area where there was, like, a broken bridge. And immediately I was like, oh, it's unplayable on the Steam Deck? It looks like shit on Steam Deck? No! No! I'm sure they'll fix it. I'm sure they'll patch it. They usually do. It does not play on the Steam Deck well at all, like 20 FPS. I yeah, Gene Gene reposted it. Fuck. Uh, according to the goat, Stephanie Jim Sterling, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is amazing and basically a Yakuza game, but in the Final Fantasy universe. Only sixty gigs is just an insane statement. Is only twenty five k in student debt. Yeah. Also, Rise of Ronin. Oh my god, Rise of Ronin is coming out too. But Rise of Ronin is a PlayStation Five. It doesn't come out on the on the steam deck right do you use the steam deck a lot i've been considering buying one but it feels like kind of a waste with such a good pc well guess what it's not a waste because you can literally do remote play from your pc which greatly greatly improves your steam deck look too if you would like um god i am such an evangelist for steam deck it's not even funny look all my life i was waiting for all my life, I was waiting for a Steam Deck. My entire life. You can even stream the PS5 to it. Yeah, it is a PSP user's wet dream. Exactly. It is what I wish the PSP was. Bro, what the fuck is this? Have you ever pondered the truth? Hassan Piker at Black Hole of Knowledge. Oh, I thought this was a fucking actual like hater video with 400 views. And then I realized it says exploring the mysterious shrinking of Hassan Piker's head and its consequences on our world. At first, I thought it was like a fucking hater video. And then I saw they're talking about my head size. And I'm like, oh, it's probably a fan that's like making a meme. Have you seen the custom Steam Deck boot animations you can add to your Steam Deck? I don't care. I don't want anything. The games don't run at 60 FPS. So the game's looking like ass. I have a Switch and I don't play much. Will I do the same with the Steam Deck? No, because everything in the Steam library, you can technically play on the Steam Deck. Obviously, not everything, because some games you just simply cannot play uh, on the Steam Deck, but...
I've never played Elden Ring on the Steam Deck, but I think you can play Elden Ring on the Steam Deck, actually. DD2 runs 10 FPS on the deck. Yeah, like, if, if certain games are not perfectly optimized for the Steam Deck, they suck. Like, Starfield was not completely unplayable, but close to being unplayable on the fucking Steam Deck. Elden Ring is often the most played game on Steam Deck. Wait, really? I didn't know that. I played Diablo on the deck. Like I, I've, I've played so much on the Steam Deck. God, Starfield, it's ridiculous. Starfield wasn't optimized for literally anything. Yeah, true. Remember when Todd the God literally said, "Just get a better PC." Lol, crazy. Programs on. I've been. All right, let's do Dan Schneider. 10 shocking revelations from Quiet On Set, The Dark Side of Kids TV, which is something that I wanted to watch yesterday. Platypus, I hope you're ready. Strap on and get ready. Hold on to your butt, Platypus. For those of you who weren't here yesterday, when we were, look, trigger warning, by the way, uh, we were covering this in in a twelve month subscriber. A twelve month. What? What is GDC? to some on twitter dan has lost a lot of weight by the way good for him no 12 month subscriber who was uh game developer conference is hosting melanie mac isn't that like the weird isn't melanie mac that weird fucking like right wing twitch streamer who's like always talking about how she loves god and shit No, GDC is, no, that's not GDC. That's games done quick. GDQ is games done quick. I'm waiting 17 years. I'm not back. He said every game my team lost is rigged. Damn, he was in here in the morning. He was in here in the morning. I miss him. Uh Oh, here's another one. Oh boy, what a week, y'all. Uh, let's talk about it. My name is Jack. I was a child actor on Zoe 101, one of this guy's shows. I also worked in his production department as an intern on iCarly, and I worked in the writer's room on Sam and Cat and Victorious. This Max documentary that was recently released did a really good job of uncovering the details of workplace toxicity, specifically on Dan Schneider's shows for Nickelodeon. We could talk about the massages. We could talk about the fact that he would literally count his gold coin collection in front of his crew who was living paycheck to paycheck. We could talk about how sometimes he would bring out a shotgun to scare one of the writers when they were working at his house. We could talk about the high level conversations I wasn't supposed to hear about how Nickelodeon didn't want to recommend antidepressants for Jeanette McCurdy after her mom died for fear that she might kill herself and make the network look bad. But what I do want to talk about is never letting this stuff happen again. This is an entire industry built on hope and dreams and adrenaline and wish fulfillment. And that can be a very dangerous thing for megalomaniacs to wield. Even in posting this, I'm a little afraid. Is this going to screw up my career moving forward? I have no idea, but I think it's important and it needs to be said. Because if my silence ensures the perpetuation of environments I don't want to work in anymore, then what is the point of working in them? And until Homeboy goes on 60 Minutes to answer some questions from some real journalists and not a cast member of his who he... I wouldn't... I would not bet on 60 Minutes doing a good job. 
unless like it reaches a certain point where like it is objectively bad like a r kelly style situation you know what i mean like or not objectively bad it is objectively bad but i mean like in the public perception like people are demanding some kind of uh people are demanding some kind of like actual um what is it restitution i don't know like yeah it needs to reach like actual critical mass exactly like people are demanding reckoning and only then will they maybe do some decent diligent journalism he's paying to be there apology not accepted Are the fuck platypus when you need them? No, I mean... Alexa Nicholas hit a money spread on Dan. Wow, we got money spread videos and progressive moral compasses. And you know we ain't come alone. We brought the homie Alexa Nicholas. Alexa, hit this nigga with a money spread. <laughs> she was on Zoe 101. She has first-hand experience with you and doesn't fuck with you. Dan Schneider looks like someone juiced him like an orange. Oh my god. M Hut is so much smoke for Dan Schneider. Jesus Christ. It's pretty funny. Yeah, Alexa is a, is a Haas and Abbey head as well. Chatter, holla back boy, crazy sports story developing right now involving millions of dollars to illegal betting ring from Shohei Otani bank accounts. I know, man. I already covered it. Yes, I, I am aware that it is strange that we have another high-profile Hazanabi head who's also an Alex variant. I know. I know. It is strange to me, too. I don't know why all of my, all of my content creator, journalist, politician... Friends of the show are all named Alex or Alexa or Alexi. I guess the only Alex was Alexi Navalny that I wasn't a, fr a friends of the show of. I don't know how that worked. I don't know how that happened. You could say Alex Jones is a bit of a Hasanabi head. Christ, dude. Oh, shit. Philly, I made a video as well. That's crazy. All right. Uh, there's a couple things I wanted to look at. Brrr, what was I going to do here? Uh, they came after my boy, Sean the Goat King. Oh, there was this little piece here. Turns out plans were scrapped for a Trump rally in Arizona with two sources citing a desire to save money and attend a more politically advantageous event in Ohio last weekend. But that means that Trump's last trip to Arizona remains October 9th, 2022. He is too broke to have a fucking rally. Oh, my God. There was that part that I was going to cover. The other thing I was going to cover is, is Kyle Rittenhouse. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Um, exonerated, I guess, or not found guilty of, of uh, murdering people at a Black Lives Matter rally. rally Kyle Rittenhouse, that one is doing a speaking tour. Um, here he is, getting booed at. Uh, in what what school did he go to? He was chased out of uh, of one of the 
speaking engagements that he had. I think it was in Memphis. Juneteenth. We shouldn't celebrate Martin Luther King Day. We should be working those days. It's called Katani Brown Jackson, an affirmative action hire. He's talked nonsense about George Floyd, and he said he'd be scared if a black pilot was on a plane. Does that not seem racist? I don't know anything about that. Oh. Then answer no, no, no. Does that seem racist? Is a yes or no question, Kyle? Why do these fucking losers get speaking deals and you don't? Do you just turn them down? You're an important voice king? What do you mean, dude? There's no fucking multi-millionaire backed, like, campus organization like Turning Point USA that's, like, greasing the fucking wheels of people, like, uh, to get people like me on the speaking circuit. The last time I had a speaking engagement, it was actually literally fucking canceled, by the way. Shouts out to, I think it was either Loyola or... I think it was either Loyola or, or Pepperdine or whatever, one of those schools. I was supposed to speak on the strikes that were ongoing uh, and the importance of labor unions to uh, to the, the, fuck, what was it? I think it was like the, no, not Chicago. No, 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 uh, LMU. No, it was, it was out here. It was out here. I was, I was supposed to do that. And then it got canceled after October 7. It was, I was going to talk to film students. I think it was Loyola Marymount. Yeah. And... Um, there was a speaking engagement fee and I was going to obviously give it to the strike funds, but I know this is going to sound like I'm trolling, but serious question. Why not speak for free? You reach other places asking to speak. Wait, what? First of all, I would do it for free and I have done it for free many times. I've spoken at like rallies, protests, things of that nature, but when we're talking about, when we talk about like a university speaking engagement, oftentimes there's like security and a shit ton of like back end stuff. It costs money. They don't just like let people come and speak for free, especially at a college. Also, not only that, but I just described to you that they were willing to pay me and I was going to take the money and give it to the labor unions. Of course it costs money. Anyway. Just call Harvard. Hey, I can yap a bit. I got Twitch clout. Yeah. Anyway, there's no such thing as a free lunch, okay? And there's no such thing as a free speech. You understand me? Especially not at the top of the hour when there's a three-minute ad break. This is the only part of the broadcast where you get paywalled a little bit unless you subscribe for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime by connecting your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account. Is it just money? Like, if you don't got enough, you can speak there or they still wouldn't let a leftist? Wait, what? Here's the sermon ad right now. You become a C tier streamer next to Ice Poseidon by Kai, almost a B. Well done. I'm glad that Kai Sinat thinks I'm uh, Ice Poseidon tier as a fucking streamer. <laughs> I personally don't give a shit, but. Sorry, almost an Ice Poseidon tier streamer by uh, Kai's Metrics. Um, do people think you're supposed to like go out and give speeches for fun? Let me 
You see this insane TikToker's videos? You cannot build a holy land for your children on the mass grave of other children. Come build a better world with Pookie playing the new World of the Rings game. <laughs> That's insane. Um, what was I, what was I going to do? There was something else I wanted to say and look at. We covered the Otani thing. I don't have time for the, some more news. I don't have time for Bernie Moreno. Thoughts on Ken Carson? Yeah, I wanted to do gaming time, except uh, I don't think I can do gaming time. You want to know why? Because I realize it's Jenk's birthday. And I have Jenk's birthday dinner. Excuse generated? I mean, it's not... It's not like a excuse... It, I mean, it's a pretty valid one. I literally forgot about it until Marat texted me. Buy him Dragon's Dogma 2 so we can play together. Jenks for nothing. Okay, good one. Uh, tomorrow, I have Chromio in the freaking building. We will be talking about Israel-Palestine. His last birthday before the birthday of the White House? Exactly. Hasanabi will make up excuses. Any excuse. In order not to play video games, Don Lamon has been pushed back until after I come back from Australia. Okay. Stunning introduction. And uh, merchandise is still available at this point. A lot of the stuff is sold out, but we're uh, ready. We're fulfilling orders on back order. Tomorrow I got Chromio coming. Very excited for that. I just realized the place I have to go to is far as fuck, which is fucking annoying. God damn it. And my phone. Is almost out of battery. Devastating day. I was on about to go to Kai's house to beat his ass chat. That's why the stream is over now. Yeah, I found out about him rating me B tier, so I'm gonna fucking bust in there like I'm phantom taxing him. Anyway, love you guys, and I will see you tomorrow with Chromio in the building. Like I said, be kind to of one another. Another half day, seven hours. Who the fuck is this guy? You know what I'm saying? What the fuck? <laughs> Bye. Sudden discord at chip prop Grey names take on breaks Tiny Bernie Sanders LGBTQR Air Force The whole left at your fingertips On a at your door